All right, testing the microphone and my extremely squeaky chair. Can you folks hear me? Please use a keyframe's frequency of four seconds or less. Currently, keyframes are not being sent often enough, which can cause buffering. All right. I haven't, I haven't streamed to YouTube in ages. Uh, more keyframes. Cool. Okay, how did I change that? Hi, everyone, by the way. It's asking me to uh, send more keyframes, which I'm not entirely sure. Stream output streaming keyframe interval auto. It's set on auto. Oh, you can't hear me. That's very good to know. Very funny. Uh, you're 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 a class act comedian. Keyframe intervals. I'm gonna have them at zero. I don't I don't care. YouTube. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to live my life. Let's see here. I'm gonna gonna get the right browser up. Got the chat there. Can you actually uh, can you get the chat running in your stream? Actually, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna experiment here. This is gonna be fun. Unless I'm gonna take this out. Hi everyone, hi, <laughs> hello. Uh, I will be with you in a second. I have not been streaming in a while and OBS is like a strange beast to me. So I will, let's see, uh, window capture and we're gonna go with, boop. Oh, oh, oh dear. There we go. Let's, uh, that's gonna have a lot of crucial information. So we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this. Uh, chat. What if we do this? But um, and then we do this. See, I am some kind of wizard. I'm a Tremere. <laughs> uh, vote, vote, make it. Uh, thank you very much. I'm actually looking forward to this too. I can, I, I have um, I have not been present for a long time, and I've missed so many things. I'm gonna chroma key this baby here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a custom color. And we're gonna, oh, this is gonna require some finagling. Do this, dark gray, and everything disappeared. But what if we do this? Do this, see? Pretty sneaky. Uh, let me actually get the right color code for that. See, this is, this is what I like about streaming. You can take your time, you can play around. You can not provide content to your wonderful viewers as they're waiting patiently for you to actually do something. Let me get the right color background there for this. This is 1990. No, it wasn't pretty. Mine is 26, 26, 26 in the uh, HTML codes. I was not off at all. This is great. Now we can have like a little chat window here. So everyone who's watching this later will be able to see the chat window, uh, I think. Now I don't know where to put that though. Uh, what if we do this? We will make it smaller. And have it like this, like so. Over here, that's fine. Gonna just go and do this. Oh, there I am, haha. -ha. Uh, blink and you miss me. Just starting soon, there we go. Now we are in business. Hello everyone. And my extremely desaturated face has now appeared on screen. I'm wearing the same fluid system thumbnail. Thank you very much. Of course, I'm gonna take my time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh boy, that is extremely hard to read on stream. I can imagine. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fiddle around a little bit more with the window capture thing, the filters, and we're gonna do. Oh no, okay, that didn't work. Uh, smoothness. Can I change this? Oh, well, that's actually pretty good. I'm um, still barely viewable, but uh, better than nothing. Can I do an, let's see here, color key. We'll have it there for now. It doesn't look great, but um, it looks better than nothing. Let's see here, glitch 42. Started watching for lore. Love the channel because your politics are awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Oh boy, I have a little thing here in my camera as well. Uh, my politics, yes, I actually haven't uh, haven't been talking a lot about that stuff lately. But yeah, uh, I'm way more political on on Twitter. So if you if you just want to be here to enjoy the lore, which I don't fault you for, don't don't follow my Twitter. It's a garbage uh, garbage Twitter account. Um, but I've 
I hope the volume's not too bad. I have not been active on e either Twitter or YouTube for a long time. I'm very uh, sporadically active. I'm just gonna take some stuff out of my pocket. Uh, I was a little bit delayed because one of my green screen, uh, God, ugh, look at this chin. Uh, one of my green screen uh, uh, poles, <laughs> lack of Tim, lack of better names, uh, just collapsed on me, broke completely. All the pieces just fell apart. So that's great. I, luckily, I had another one from when I was doing podcasts. We used a lot of spotlights. <clears throat> podcasts, I say, but we were doing actual plays in the good old days of Sweet Fighters. Don't look that up. That's something I was doing a long time ago. So here we are. I'm going to have the mic a little bit further away so you don't hear my wonderful, delicious smacks because I am a little bit... I just... I woke up like uh, an hour and a half ago. I had... um. Basically, uh, basically, uh, I'm a teacher. That's my day job. So uh, we had our graduation graduation day for students today. Graduation, graduation, graduation day. <laughs> That's a hard word to say uh, if you're Swedish or if you at least have my accent. Uh, graduation day, and I just I, I got completely knocked out. So I came home, slept for five hours. Uh, I think got up and decided, hey, I want to play these games. That's my water, my wife's water bottle. Mine reeks because I had a uh, fun light in it and didn't wash it for a while. So I'm going to have to clean that one out. Too much information. Oh, you're going to be storytelling your first Vampire Dark Ages Chronicle. Your channel is nice. source to get into it. Yador, good luck with Dark Ages. Actually, I uh, Dark Ages has been has been really on my mind for a long time. I do this. I don't get to see my little bookmarks. Uh, I love Dark Ages. Uh, I once tried very ambitiously to run a Giovanni Chronicles, uh, Transylvania Chronicles <laughs> crossover chronicle. Uh, it didn't go that well, but I really, uh, really am a fan of those uh, of those books and Dark Ages alike. So actually, I have been I've been scared of touching Dark Ages on my channel because I'm not quite as read up on that, and that is way more political. In my opinion, then no, I mean, as in the vampire society is way more. There's so many things. There's the roads, and you have all these different um, factions, and and it's way more dynamic, in in my opinion, than than Vampire the Masquerade. All, all the clans are a little bit more. They have a wider leg room, if that's the proper word. A teacher, what? It's based on my style of lore videos. Uh, oh, you're starting your Hikata Chronicle tonight. Good luck, Hikata. I love him. I love him. I did. Um, I did a one shot Hikata Chronicle. A while back, let me let me uh, Ghana Gaming's uh, online. Uh, if I, th I think it was Ghana Gaming's uh, online. Th this is during COVID uh, digital convention. I don't remember the name of it. But I had a really fun Hikata group playing. They were coming to Chicago to basically take back what the uh, the Giovanni had lost during the uh, family reunion. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, my, my. Um, I have, I have been receiving. Uh, well, I haven't been receiving. I, I did the mistake of ego searching for once, and I saw a lot of people called me boring and slow, which I will take as a compliment because um, that was actually my intention setting up making lore videos. I wanted to make, uh, I wanted to make very easily digestible, very basic lore videos. And over time, of course, the content I've been covering has gotten more. Uh, but uh, not necessarily, uh, ooh, sorry, I'm using my mic there, not necessarily uh, any faster. And that's something I I got a lot of criticism from a friend way early on when I started. He said it was difficult to keep up when I switched, changed gears uh, in my lore videos. So I made a point of trying to speak more slowly, take little bigger breaks between. So definitely a snooze fest if you're familiar with the lore. I have not re-listened to any of my stuff for a long time, but. I, I've actually been thinking this summer I'm gonna, gonna go back through the archives and cringe at myself for a little while. You know, Dark Ages was because we could go over centuries and play as elders as well as the players. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. I, I will still never get over the enormous cop out of Giovanni Chronicles, the fourth book. You're not even playing your own characters; you're playing ghouls. That's such a I I just I would love to be a fly on the wall in the room when they decided on that because on the one hand I get it yeah it's really hard to predict what's been happening over the over the centuries uh, but on the other hand man what a what a miserable way. <clears throat> 
So let's see here. Um, we are going to play some Vampire the Masquerade jam games, fan games, it shows. Uh, I'm very excited about this. I don't quite remember, even though I made a post about it on my on on, um, on my uh, YouTube channel recently and Twitter. Uh, if you're a content creator, you're working on a project. It's it's consumable in some matter. Uh, I'm trying to get people together to do like a half hour weekly by weekly thing just talking about projects, just inviting people over and learning more about what the community's been up to. Bless you too as well, Skeleton King. Thank you so much and thank you for the messages uh, recently. I really appreciate them. But uh, yes, uh, the Dark Pack is of course the standard Vampire the Masquerade agreement that you're allowed to use a lot of their content uh, even to make profit in, in a sense like for a YouTube, YouTube channel but you are um, uh, there there were some caveats uh, v5 was not available in the beginning if I, if I recall but it's been made available since and now they've allowed people to start making games on itch.io and basically they're taking a, if you're making a profit they're taking a small percentage of it it's like, well, not a small pretty hefty i would imagine but they're also allowing you to use their you know intellectual property and then of course you have the storytellers vault where you can publish v5 books as well i reviewed the uh the uh, playing the sabbat book recently which together with the official sabbat core book is really interesting if you like listening to my videos while trying to sleep, your videos give me a good understanding of the various lore. Oh, Liz, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. I would have never imagined uh, people use my my uh, dulcet tones for going to sleep, uh, and I think that's really nice. Personally, I used I used to be able to listen to stuff to fall asleep. These days, it has to be perfectly quiet uh, for me to fall asleep. So I'm, I'm envious. I really wish I had a better ability to fall asleep to things, but there's. There's something in my brain that says, oh no, you're going to miss something if you fall asleep. So I, I'm just going to lie awake uh, for, for hours. Okay, so. Uh, I already have my own personal project to work on, but after I'm done with the study this month, I will go back to it and then finish my small notebook for I share a core book with seven more sheets of roll. Plus, plus roll. That sounds like a really cool project. Hit me up when you've uh, gotten that underway and I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, I just realized I did not install all the games I think I just downloaded them so this is gonna be our first <laughs> this is gonna be our first uh, trial here just try to see if we can find uh, the games that I just downloaded so date modified uh, praxis heartless lullaby and waning crescent well let's look a little bit of, uh, about what this thing is about great English there uh, see what this the whole thing is. so first first place is heartless lullaby and if I recall that means that um, YouTube keeps giving me errors like, oh, your keyframe rate is bad. It's like, screw you, YouTube. Uh, I, I streamed to Twitch a couple of times. Twitch is way better uh, about this stuff. Um, but yeah, basically, this is something they had uh, up until October 31st, 2021. Oh, between October and November 30th. So there was a month long project. Uh, to celebrate the finale of Month of Darkness, we're opening our Dark Pack Agreement for exactly one month to allow you to create video games using the Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition setting. This, of course, now has uh, turned into a permanent thing where you can do this on Itch.io at least, I think. Uh, we were inspired to organize this event by Vampire Jam, organized by our community members in 2019. We played the submitted games and found... I seem to recall Outstar playing some of those games at the time. Found many of them to be very much on brand with Vampire the Masquerade. Today, some of the Jam's participants work on the official World of Darkness product. Santa Monica by Night's developers joined us in the brand team, while the writer of Communion is now writing for Mindside Theater, War of Ages. This is really, really good. Uh, I'm very happy that World of Darkness... Uh, it's still weird to call them World of Darkness. I, I, I want to call them White Wolf, but I totally get why they changed the name. Um, sleep of ages under my own real life character. <laughs> uh, sorry to hear that, Skeleton King. I really hope you get it going though, because their Shira is something I would like to learn a lot more about. It's a really interesting faction. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm on stream here. Uh, personal opinion. I gotta say, a lot of the, a lot of the games released uh, lately, uh, Vampire. I would I would argue uh, some of the, some of the best ones are the text based ones. I really appreciate them, even though I still haven't played. Council of Knives and the other one where you play as hunters. Uh, let me just casually open Steam because I do believe I have that. Um, but Swan Song and Werewolf, um, were Werewolf Earth Blood, where Blood? No, not Blood Hunt. I have not played Blood Hunt, by the way. That's something I have to play somewhere down the line. Uh, let's see here, Masquerade. Blood Hunt has been 
kicking off really well, I've heard. I'm super excited about it. It's really not my kind of game. I'm very bad at shooters, but I would love to give it a try because apparently it's doing really well and it's free to play. It's perfect. So, oh, there's, oh, Heartless Lullaby is on Steam too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Parliament of Knives, Out for Blood. That's the Hunter one. Night Roads I played, um, didn't finish it, but I thought it was really good. Uh, I, I heard Out for Blood is really, really good. I've heard mixed opinions of Parliament of Knives. I haven't played it. Um, but I think personally, Earth Blood and Swan Song. I'm, I'm, let me just say, I'm, I'm very glad that World of Darkness is reaching out to their community to, uh, to, 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 to get more or more people working on games for them. I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, Out for Blood is the one you play as a hunter. Also, I hope there's not a lot of lag uh, while we're doing this. Yeah, I'm trying to have a 4,000 bit rate. I have no idea if that's good enough, good or not, but we'll go for it. But basically, yeah, there was a bunch of rules. Uh, they had some workshops. This is really good. I love this. They had a workshop for how to make games. Um, maybe I should watch that because I really, actually, I started working on a very small episodic uh, choose your own adventure thing. Um, Right after I finished uh, Swan Song. So before we start playing, I'm sorry, this is turning into a chatting with the with the community rather than me playing games. But um, I, once I finished Swan Song, that was the that was the last nail in the coffin because I've been I've really struggled with my motivation lately uh, in terms of making content, in terms of like what works and what doesn't work. Because a lot of times I've, I've tried to branch out and with mixed results and it, it I, I was feeling like ah man I've, I've already covered almost everything vampire what do i do so it, during the fall last year you saw me do do some revamps of earlier videos you saw me do some kind of clickbaity stuff i was just basically trying the ground to see if i could do more loose uh just me talking about things mixed uh, mixed reaction in here because to me it felt not like the usual content i make and i got a little bit disappointed with it there's a bit of a sync between my mic input and camera. That is very unfortunate. Can I... Is is my voice behind my camera or is it ahead of it? I would imagine it's behind, in which case I can probably delay my camera a little bit. This is a trick I've learned. Let's see, filters... I have a, I have a transition override. Render delay. Uh... A render delay of let's say 200 milliseconds all right so we're gonna try this for a little bit see if the, it matches better let me know in the chat if the the sync between my lips and my mouth is gonna work wow yeah what i'm seeing is a little bit weird but hopefully it's better on on your end otherwise i'll i'll keep mixing about it's it's all good yeah, so this game jam is for video games only. That means you can't sip in board games, card games. Eh, we don't need to read all these rules. Dark pack logo. I'm doing this. <clears throat> and what I really enjoy is that they also gave a prize uh, to the winners and gave them some some cool PDFs. Put their game on Steam. Really good stuff. Should have brought you a good video. Really helpful to me in my life. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, you can send it to me on. on... Yeah. <laughs> Man, first time ever I've sneezed on stream, I believe. Um, I sneezed incredibly loudly, so uh, I spared you that. They give you a bunch of resources, some free music, um, art, everything. Really good, but I think we should probably install... What's the first game that... The, the winner. We're going to start with the winner, Heartless Lullaby, Praxis, and then Waning uh, Crescent. And then we are also going to play other games, but possibly not today. Uh, but definitely uh, in the future. I want to play as many of these games as I can. Thank you. So we'll start with Heartless Lullaby. Remember the best of Heartless Lullaby. It's done in Unity. Nice. So let's see if I can get the game on screen as well. Let's see here. Uh, game capture. Vamp game, we'll call that. And we'll make it a specific window. Heartless Lullaby. Boink. And that's over everything. Perfect. We'll put that onto my phone and the chat's gonna be there. There we go. I think this is fine, right? Ooh, that's loud. Hold on. Give me a second. That's incredibly loud in my ears as well. Uh, I'm just gonna lower the volume a little bit. 
Nice. I gotta lower it a little bit more. There we go. Heartless Lullaby. Vampire the Masquerade. So I... Oh, is there still lag? Um, I'm trying to fix that. So I'm, I have a filter uh, that changes... Uh, I have a render delay. So if I go 100 milliseconds, is this is this better? Otherwise, yeah, keep... keep it's about an hour and a half. Oh, okay. So if there's if there's a huge delay between voice and uh, a video, uh, just let me know. Uh, rather, voice my voice and uh, my mouth movements. Uh, let's put this up here. Uh, let me know, and I'll try to fix it. Also, sorry for the uh, this not being great. Um, I only now realize I could put the chat on screen. So uh, this is a hack job, but I'm I'm nothing if not a hack. Okay, so. Starry. This is the winner of the 2021 Vampire Jam Heartless Club, 4:30 a.m. I love the aesthetics, very V5. Our character is Zach Riley, a young man in his late 20s, partying with his colleague, college buddy Johnny. You stand in the queue that gives access to a fairly new and a trendy nightclub, The Heartless. Johnny is not feeling very well. He is hunched behind us, staggering slightly. With a blank stare. I'm assuming this is Johnny then. Uh, that's really unfortunate, Silver Trim. Um, if it gets too bad, uh, to the point where it's unbearable, it looks like The Sims. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the neon art style. That's something that they really go strong for in V5, which I really appreciate. I always love neon. Uh, but yeah, if it gets too bad, Silver Trim, maybe uh, you can catch the VOD uh, or or just listen. Um, just not listen. Just not look at this here but just look at the game hopefully that audio is gonna be fine all right are you sure you want to keep the party going stud trying to focus his gaze on blinking effusively of course you bastard i like that they they have a have a darker font for for what they're doing of course you bastard he shouts as he raises the half empty beer bottle in his hand this is to be our big night we have to get in however we can yeah johnny i, I don't think they're gonna let you in if you're staggering around before Johnny finishes his sentence, you hear a loud snort behind you. As you turn around, you notice how the bouncer starts to cross his arms and frown. Main reason for winning is because of the story, which is a good lady Miss Outstar did say, is a good hook and a way to enter the dark spies of mortals. Great, no spoilers though. But you had a, they had a month to make this game. So even, I think the visuals are fine, but even then, like in a month, it's incredibly difficult to make something of high quality in a month. So, kudos to the people who make games. Get the hell out of here, fucking drunks, he shouts grimly. I like the profile pictures. Press tab to highlight intr intractable, intractable elements. This is a good staple, classic point and click. So, can we interact with the newspapers? There's no point in trying to get into another joint at this hour, and certainly not with Johnny in this state. We're leaving. When you turn around with the intention of leave, no, I didn't want to leave. I wanted to check out the newspaper. When you turn around with the intention of leaving the queue, Johnny's face twists into a pitiful grimace. No, man, it's our our big night. Stumbling, Johnny tries to block your way. I'm not moving. You idiot. If I leave him alone, he'll end up in the ICU. One drink, Johnny, one, and then we are leaving. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, we gotta go here. You idiot. Oh, wait, that was Zach. Sorry, that was that was our character. Drinking blood in stream? That's a masquerade violation. I'm not drinking blood. This, is, this isn't blood. It's against the TOS of, of YouTube. Let's talk, let's talk to Johnny. Johnny's appearance is truly pitiful. The multiple stains on his shirt, wrinkled and unbuttoned, are a decadent reflection of all the excesses committed during the night. His breath smells of the worst absinthe. Ugh. And although you spent a thousand raves together, you've never seen him like this. A sudden burst of lucidity brightens his face. Chill, man! He exclaims, waving open his free hands. I just need a few seconds to catch my breath. I'm not going to let that bitter bitch ruin this night for me, too. He adds before taking the last swig from the bottle. You focus on getting them to let us through. Sure, that's what they all say. No blood. Yeah, 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 no. No, it's plasma. It's completely different. You look at Johnny for a couple of seconds. A few drops of beer runs down his fingers, glinting off the wedding ring on his finger. You can't help but feel deeply sorry for him. Ooh, Johnny. Johnny boy. Johnny boy. Any of you guys seen uh, From the Mouth of Madness, by the way? In the Mouth of Madness? My second favorite John Carpenter movie after The Thing. I love, and, and I'm obviously blatantly stealing this from uh, from Red Letter Media, but Johnny Boy, like one of the guys in the movie, is actually uh, 
Vigo the Carpatian, is that his name? Vigo? Lord Vigo the Carpatian, Ghostbusters 2? And his English is hilarious. Johnny boy! Uh, let's see here. It's quintessential harvested fresh from reality deviants. Yes, reality deviants. Johnny, if after everything you've had to drink, you're still thinking about her, one more drink isn't going to solve anything, but I owe you. Garbage can. Okay, so that's the only thing I can interact with here. It has a highlight. A trash can overflowing with papers and pieces of cardboard of different colors. There's not much to see around here. Behind you, you hear a loud retching sound. It sounds like Johnny is struggling not to let it all out. I don't think he's gonna let us in, Johnny. Just this is a hunch. Resolve moderate. Do I have? Oh, I have a character sheet. Yeah, through the mouth of madness is a great, great movie. Um, is it through or in the mouth of madness? It's, it's got uh, one of my favorite actors. I loved him in the movie Merlin. And that's a deep cut joke reference, by the way. Interestingly enough, okay, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a tangent here. So one of the guys who worked really hard on uh, Steven Universe, uh, INJ, I believe. Uh, I think. God, it's been such a long time. He used to make a webcomic called RPG WW. Uh, no, RPG World, sorry. Oh, I lost my voice there for a second. Uh, he, um, <clears throat> He also had a very, a very cool but short-lived animated YouTube series called Knock Force. I think it's still out there, Knock Force. And one of the, one of the, one of the things was they were talking about. Ah oh man, who's playing uh, Dr. Grant in in Jurassic Park? Uh, hold on, I gotta check this out. Dr. Grant, Jurassic Park. Uh, out, uh no, come on. Um. Very hard to find this information. Uh, Sam Neill. Sam Neill. So they were like, Sam Neill, I loved you in Merlin. Because that's like one of his least popular movies. Uh, anyway, that's a deep cut. Doesn't matter. Uh, but but I, I still like, that's my favorite line from their series. Like, I loved you in Merlin. Because nobody's seen Merlin. And if you've seen Merlin, it's not a good movie. Uh, okay. Resolve moderate. Maybe there's something valuable in the trash. Okay, we're going to check this out. I'm assuming this is my character sheet. So we're going to check it out later. Uh, maybe there's something valuable in the trash. Success, you find a used VIP ticket. Uh, what if it works? Okay, let's see a character sheet here. Have strength two, dexterity one, stamina two, manipulation one, charisma three, compo- Oh, I like the illustrations. Um, yeah, I really like them. Great touch, and this is probably like free art that they're using, but I think they're using it in a clever way. I really, really like, um, uh, Disco Elysium, I played that not too long ago, and Disco Elysium vibes are, I love that game. So anything that reminds me of that, which this does, uh, it's, it's a huge, huge plus. Very composure, intelligence, wits, resolve. Resolve is our highest, charisma is our highest, and these are fairly even. What's your first impression of Hunter 5th Edition? I have not been able to read more. All right, uh, I work as a teacher, so this week is was graduation week for my students, and uh, Next week I'm working as well, and then I have summer holidays. Uh, I started reading Hunter. I read the introduction story. That's as far as I've gotten into the new PDF. I'm going to go th uh, give my thoughts on on uh, YouTube later, but so far, like the introduction story, they nailed it. I, I really like it, and I I spoken a little bit with Huddy about it and what she's uh, Huddy von Schland, community manager, I believe, community manager. She's definitely yeah. She, she's working for World of Darkness, uh, Huddy von Schland. Check her out, by the way, on YouTube. Great channel. Uh, she she gave me some some of her uh, thoughts about it, and I'm really impressed. She gave me like a rundown of certain things that I, I really really enjoyed. So shout out to to Heidi Wunschland. I'll write her name in. I'll even link her. Uh, Heidi Wunschland. She doesn't make an awful lot of content anymore because she's very busy, but she's super active on the official World of Darkness TikTok. Check her out. She's great. Um, and one of my favorite content creators. How can Disco Bouncer scouts at you? As soon as he sees you approaching, he rolls his eyes on the sun on the side. Right in YouTube, VTM Huddy. Yeah, yeah, you can find her easily if you just are VTM Huddy. What do you want, scum? Don't you have a better place to drop dead? He adds without even looking you in the eye. Uh, use, used VIP ticket. This should get us both in, right, mate? Did he just punch me? All right, good. I like that. Not the obvious route. 
Uh, before you realize exactly what's happening, your head hits the cold asphalt of the roadway. A sharp pain spreads quickly across your left cheekbone, and you notice a growing dampness on the back of the... Ooh. Your vision blurs, turning the light... What? He just... Wow. Shut up, your fucking mother's ass, shithead. Get the fuck out of Wow. You stand up. Johnny by your side looks at you with drunken guilt. I don't have potence, unfortunately. Um... Let's see here. Uh, Zach, I'm sorry. I Before you can finish the sentence, touching him on the shoulder, you cut him off. Don't worry, I deserved it, you say while glaring at the bouncer. Let's go, John. I think we had enough tonight. Huh. Interesting. Uh, turning around suddenly, your attention is completely captivated by the most beautiful eyes you have ever seen. Johnny. I love your eyes, Johnny. Okay. <clears throat> A woman, tall and slender, absolutely perfect, hair dyed red and tied in two buns, bright green eyes and smooth ivory skin walks towards the entrance. As she reaches your side, you feel the world grind to a halt. As she slowly looks down and stares directly at you, a warm half-smile on her face pierces your soul. Love the language in this game. She can't be real, right? Lifting her face again, the woman continues on her way past the bouncer, and greets her with a quick nod of his head, and her perfect figure disappears amidst the noise of the nightclub. What What was that? You have seen a lot of other women in your life, but never someone like her. Never someone like her. How's the uh, audio sync with my mouth, by the way? I tried to lower the, uh, the difference, but if it's still not entirely correct, I'll, I'll try to fix it in post. This is a problem I've been having for a long time. The, the camera and mic are, are out of sync. Uh, still numb, paralyzed by the experience, you feel trapped in your own mind, struggling to superimpose reason on whatever it is that is asking you to break through until you find her. I need to get into that club, whatever it takes. It's okay, good to hear, thank you. Johnny? Johnny boy! Johnny's still by your side, of course, but right now he's the least of your problems. If you had to leave him lying right there to get in, lying in his own puke, you would do it in a heartbeat. Of course I would, I don't care about Johnny. I'm not that drunk, am I? They didn't spike my last drink, right? No, no way. As insistent buzzing sounds bring you out of your reverie. Uninsistent, not ass. Zack, dude, Zack. The word slips slowly and heavily from his lips. Are you all right, Zack? You're very pale. Zack, Zack, you're not well, Zack. All right, dude, yeah, I know my own name. Your own name begins to sound strange, repeated so many times by someone in such a state of dispossession. Dispossession is a good word. I'll remember that one. Remember that one. Will you please shut the fuck up? Johnny's face twists into a grimace of confusion. Dude. By the time you realize that Johnny's voice is Johnny's voice sounds far away, you realize that you are walking towards the entrance of the club. You see the bouncer's arm grow up, and you close your eyes in anticipation. But from the bouncer's walkie-talkie, a static rap message finds a way to you. Let them through, Victor. It really is a special night. Lifting the walkie to his mouth. Of course, sir. Returning the device to the holster on his belt, Victor, the mountain of muscle that until now had blocked your entrance, points at you with his index finger. You. You can come in. Your friend, too. If you don't behave, there will be no warnings. Understood? Hello, Draconic. I am playing... Uh, what was the name of this game again? Uh, this was... Uh... Heartless, Heartless Lullaby, the winner of Vampire Jam of 2021, fan games on its show for Vampire the Masquerade. Miracles do happen at 4.35 in the morning. Yes, Johnny Boy. <clears throat> also, I hope my mic isn't catching. I'm, I've got some sniffles, but I'm muting myself when I had to sniff. Like a wave crashing violently against a shore, a myriad of colors, smells, and sounds explode against your senses. Just ten minutes ago, you would have gladly dragged Johnny home. Now, your whole world swirls and dances, merging with the trance music and the lights of the Heartless. I'm gonna move this up here. I have no real good way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. I'll make the chat a little bit smaller, and I will put it here. I think it's good. In your mind, only one image keeps the situation coherent. That woman, her eyes drilled into your consciousness, call out to you, inviting you to meet her. Sex in her voice. Johnny, boy, pull yourself together, for God's sake. At least until I get her name. Nope, that's not a good place. Uh... Ah, we'll put it here. Johnny behind you seems to come to, come to now that he sees himself inside the club. We did it! He says, shaking his head, and wiping the corner of his mouth. I, I knew you'd get us in, Zach. That's why I like you. 
He pauses for a second and swallows what was probably a gag. I think it's too late now, but control yourself, okay? I wouldn't want to get our asses kicked out of here, man. Don't worry. For the moment, I'm going to order something without alcohol. Water. Water, for instance. Mmm, water. The word sounds inordinately strange coming from him. It is possible that he has not touched a drop for days. I'm going to the bar, Zach. When I'm a little bit better, we'll have the last one, okay? <clears throat> Sure, man. I'll walk around while I'm at it. While I'm at it, I've never been here before, and I like the vibe and the people who seem to follow it. Of course, let's have some fun. <clears throat> I don't need to get into the cloakroom. Nobody's there to take my cloak. So let's get on the dance floor. Objective: Have fun. Oh boy. Let's lower the volume a little bit. Oh, I love, I love the dancing. Okay, we got the dance floor, we got people. <clears throat> Friday the 5th. Practically, it's Friday the 3rd. No, it's Friday the uh, 10th, right? Nine. <clears throat> Before you, a couple converses quietly, blocking the exit through the terrace. With regal bearing and elegant attire, they don't look like the usual clientele of a club of this type. At this time of night, he wears his hair slicked back and get gelled. Completely black like his eyes. She, also dressed in a suit, has half her head shaved with the other half descending in a cascade of pale blonde over her left shoulder. Both seem to understand each other perfectly over the thunderous music without a hitch. When they see you approach, their heads turn slightly, visibly annoyed by the interruption. What do you want, kiddo? The words said oh, the words said there slowly and venomously, sending a shiver up and down your spine. Do you treat everyone with the same contempt, or just people who don't wear our money, buddy? Excuse me? His voice booms in your head, freezing you in place. His gaze, hard and cold, anchors you to the ground. All the indignation you were feeling vanishes in a second. Reaching out her arm and interposing it between the man and you, the woman intercedes. Enough, she says with her eyes fixed on you. Turn around, handsome. There's nothing here for you. The fuck? Alright, I guess there's nothing here for me. Let's keep on going. I love this game so far. Great mood. Love the colors. Really giving me heavy Disco and uh, it was a Disco Inferno. Disco Elysium vibes. I was gonna talk to the DJ. <clears throat> the DJ is very into the music, much more than the rhythm would invite you to think. If you look for a couple of seconds, you are immediately able to realize that in his head he is following a melody of his own, moving with a cadence contrary to that of the pipe music. He seems to have dressed in clothes from two different closets, that of an 80s punk and that of a nouveau riche, daddy's boy looking to sell a pyramid scheme. Strangely, it's not a look that looks bad on him. He's not even wearing his headphones, so if you yell at him, you understand that he will hear you. Charisma plus wits. Moderate. Hey DJ, do you know the one that goes dun dun dun? <laughs> Success! Of course! Dun 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 dun, brother! Nice. I like a DJ that understands. Uh, oh, there's my friend. Should we go to the dance floor a little bit? That reminds you of Bloodlines. It really does. Uh, <laughs> really, really does. Man, Bloodlines is a... Can you? No, you can't. You can't run in this game. Can you? See, uh, settings. Nope. That's fine though. He's moving at a pretty brisk pace. The whole night has led you to this moment. The floor is yours, baby. I don't think I'm drunk enough to start dancing alone, or worse, with Johnny. Maybe later. Yeah, no. What is this? <clears throat> A crumpled piece of paper on the floor seems to have found its place among all the filth and trash decorating the dance floor. Does it have something written on it? Let's see. Unfolding it, you realize that it is an attempt at a poem, handwritten and crudely written. The author clearly doesn't know how to rhyme, although his intentions and feelings are clear from the first line. Ugh, it's embarrassing. Who the hell nowadays is so intense? I got a crumbled paper. 
Yeah, there's no Vampire the Masquerade game without a dancing floor, that's for sure. The music's not too intrusive. I enjoy it. Sitting all by herself at one of the tables reserved for customers is the woman who made you forget the rest of the world when you were waiting in line at the entrance. With an elegant glass of wine in her hand, she sips absentmindedly while glancing at her cell phone from time to time, waiting, no doubt, for someone. You find it impossible to take your eyes off her for more than 10 seconds, and no matter what you do, you always end up looking back at her. You feel like a teenager again, stealing glances at the girl of your dreams. Her hair, red as fire, gathered in two perfect buns on either side of her head, dazzles the room like an ancient lighthouse in the middle of the neon storm and trance music. Excellent writing in this game. Her gestures, elegant and distracted, subtly and rhythmic. When she finally raises her head and your eyes meet, the emerald immensity of her gaze, immensity, that's a nice word, of her gaze traps you in a world of your own, one in which only she and you exist. Talk to her, you moron. Don't just stand there staring at her. A shy, stylish smile begins to form on the woman's face. Come, sit down. If you keep looking at me like that from a distance, you're going to make me feel uncomfortable. Weirdo. Her voice travels through the air like a bullet, straight to your chest. You notice how your heart starts pounding in your chest. Some repetitions there, uh, with eagerness, almost as if it wants to escape. And before you know it, your legs are already on their way, and you find yourself sitting in front of her, still struggling to discern if it is a mirage or not. Talk to her, coward! <clears throat> Making you feel uncomfortable is the last thing I would want to make you feel tonight. Ah, success! Nice! So you understand why I simply couldn't finish it? Because I barely read. Goodness, I now understand why it's the winner. Yeah, it's really good language. <clears throat> the young woman arches her eyebrows in a gesture of amused surprise and lets out a light, mirthful laugh. You seem to have quickly found the courage you lacked. Taking a small sip from her glass and licking the corners of her mouth, she lifts her chin. Are you going to tell me your name anytime soon, brave one? Nailed it. <laughs> Zach. Zach Riley. You might have heard of me. A sale insurance. Diane. Tell me, Zach, what are you and your friend doing at the Heartless at this hour? Your friend. If you hadn't just been reminded, you would have completely forgotten that Johnny Boy is still at the bar battling an alcoholic coma and heartbreak. Ah, yes, my friend uh, is going through a rough patch. He just left his wife. He needed a boy's night out, and how could I let him down? Try not to leave him alone, then, Zack Riley, and if you can, get home before you do something you might regret. No good decision is made after midnight. If this conversation had been a bad decision, could we ever make... <clears throat> I highly doubt it, Riley, but the thought of it is not something I would dislike. But <clears throat> I want to talk to her again. I should leave her alone for now. Yeah, let's go dance with the uh, Johnny boy. Oh, what is this? Oh, how brazen. Anarch symbol right out in the middle of everything. A sort of mat or black cloth hanging between two doors display a strange symbol painted in red in a careless manner. It's quite out of tune with the rest of the decoration, and I don't know what the hell it is either. The logo of some band around here, maybe? There's a lot of places I can interact with. On the other side, you hear a lot of movement. Suddenly, a muffled scream startles you. Fuck! Knocking on the door with your knuckles. Is everything all right? Yeah, relax, girl stuff. They must be shooting up, I imagine. In any case, I'm not going to go there. <sighs> I wonder what this place is. Locked by means of magnetic card reader. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let's go. Our objective is to have fun, and we are having fun. Maybe we should try to go get a drink first if we can. Ooh! A guy with a funky hat. 
Sorry, my cat is trying to... Yeah, it really does remind me of Bloodlines as well. Yeah, sorry, my, my cat was in the room and he wanted to get out. A man hunched over the table, sipping slowly from a crystal glass. I should have shown him to you guys. Victor, you, you probably remember Victor, uh, the big fluffy gray ball. Uh, we trimmed him. Uh, he's very short fur because he struggles with cleaning himself. Uh, and it's also very, very warm right now. And he has, he's a mixed breed. He's got two different kinds of fur. So he really, really struggles during the summer months. And he's also kind of chubby. So he has so much fur that he can't really clean himself, uh, groom himself rather. So we, we uh, trimmed him. Uh, if, he, if he comes back, I will absolutely show him. I do believe there are some photos. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me find a photo of him. I want to show off my cat. Let me see here. Uh, let me go to Twitter. I should have some photos posted. Otherwise, I know my wife does. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's go check on my wife's Twitter. Let's see here. I'm trying to find, she's got so many different usernames. Let's see here. Uh, I'll post a link to the, oh, come on. Uh, where is it? Is it? There we go. That's her. That's her. Twitter. So here is the fluff boy. I will copy the picture address. <clears throat> Connor of the Earth. Corner of the Earth. Really should talk to you with everything you see or view. So that's a link to Fluffy Boy. He is not that fluffy anymore, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> here is a photo of of him being trimmed. Uh, don't worry. He enjoys this. He's actually actually vastly prefers looking like this rather than uh, <clears throat> being the fluffy kind. We also have a, a, um, a ragdoll called Wilma, uh, but she, she's just gorgeous. As you're <clears throat> Pardon me. A man hunched over the table, sipping slowly from a crystal glass, oblivious to the world. All of his clothes could be described as bizarre, reminiscent of a hobo with a high sense of aesthetics or a fashion designer in decline. In either case, his presence clashes tremendously with the place. As you approach, he slowly turns his head, and on his face, a smirk spreads from ear to ear. He's like a little lion. Walker! Straight out of the vapors of the night, and straight to the heartless, like the prodigal son of the good book, like Dorothy and her stupid yellow tiles. Sit down, son, or stand as you prefer, but give me your name, and I'll give you mine! It's, uh, Zack. Zack Riley. Have we met before? Now we have, Zach Riley. Now we have. All beginnings are awkward, but where we're going, the only thing that matters are the endings. They call me Lewis. Lewis Byrne. I like, I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. Ah, uh, nice to meet you, Lewis. Are you a regular here? Regular, of course. In every place I am regular, even if I have never been there. But this place, I know it. Oh yes, I know it well. Even if it doesn't know me, I haven't introduced myself, you know, to the owners. No, to the heartless. Owners come and go. Their ridiculous wars bury centuries of history under mountains of casualties. And when all the dust has settled, the only thing that remains is the place. This heartless place. I... Oh, Kavian. Delicious. Delicious. He's very cute. Thank you. Glad you like my cat. Are you saying that... The regency of the club changes hands a lot. Where am I missing the point? Taking a slow swig from his glass, looking at you straight in the eyes. Oh, yes, constantly. Leaving the empty glass on the bar, he gazes at the bottom of the vessel. Something tells me we'll soon see a new change, Zach Riley. I understand. I'm, um, I'm going to take a walk, okay? Sure! See you around, Walker. Don't get lost in the night. Oh, I like that guy. Can I get a drink? Some casual masquerade breaches, if you know what you're looking for. The bartender is a young girl. You estimate her to be about your age, although her demeanor is 
at least right now, much more elegant than yours. She occupies her thoughts, wiping glasses behind the bar with a dark red cloth, paying special attention to each one, as if they were much more valuable than they let on. Her hands work fast and, perhaps because of the effect of all the alcohol you've had so far, they are complicated to follow. As you instinctively lean on the bar, her icy blue gaze pins you on the spot. What will it be? Her voice is as cold as her eyes, and yet she invites you to have one more drink. <clears throat> Before you can respond, blurt out that Jaeger bomb that you're sure you'd instantly regret, Johnny comes to the rescue. Give me a few minutes, Zack. Don't start without me. Sure, man. Chill, I'm going for a walk and we'll take that last one, okay? Okay, fine, I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna talk to Johnny boy. Hey Johnny, come on, let's sweat out all the booze you've been drinking. Of course! With an astonishing agility for someone in his current state, Johnny dashes to the dance floor and you both begin to sway to the decadent beat of the music. Okay, Johnny's... Oh my god, the dancing is a glorious. Uh, mine's kind of okay, but Johnny's... Oh my god, someone's doing the chicken dance over here. I love it. Uh, is anyone doing the monkey? I love it. I love this dance. Everyone is doing a different dance. I love that. We're a show, that's for sure, but I don't give a shit. This is great. For the first time in the entire night, you feel liberated. I had enough fun by my own. I should get back to Johnny. Uh, I... Okay. <laughs> I just danced with Johnny, but sure. Music's really good, too. Staggering over the bar, Johnny seems to have slightly regained control. But that should change slightly before long. After all, we promised to have one last one, didn't we? Johnny boy! Looking good, man. Ready for the last one? Oh, of course. Here we go. B bartender, two here. Your name is Diane. Your surname you burned the night Gabriel embraced you into the Toreador clan. Since then, you are a daughter of the night and, thanks to your sire's position, an agent of the Camarilla. Or Camarilla, sorry. Can I just say, by the way, um, I know things are pronounced differently, but have, hearing literally everyone in Swan Song say, say Primogen, Every single time he said it, I was like, yeah, God, have I been saying it wrong this entire time? I know uh, things are pronounced differently, absolutely. But I'm, I'm going to keep saying Primogen, but Primogen. Everyone said Primogen and Camarilla. Um, I think they said Camarilla, right? Uh, which is not <clears throat> which is not wrong, by the way. I don't think it's wrong. Because it's a double L if it's Spanish. But um, I'm going to keep saying the Camarilla. It's it's like herbs and herbs, right? If you think about it, herbs and herbs, they're they're pronounced differently depending on where you, where you are. So I will I will hold on to that and keep saying Camarilla and Primogen, not Primogen, and Simish instead of Simitsi or Simiche or Chimichangas or however you want to pronounce them. All right, tonight your orders are clear. Negotiate with Jackson Cunningham, regent of the Heartless, his adherents of the Camarilla. The time of the anarchists have come to an end, and after the second convention of Prague, the position of the Camarilla is clear. All who are not with us are our enemies and shall burn. All right, cool. Gabriel, do you really think this anarch scum deserves our respect? Taking a small sip from your glass, you savor the sweet taste of the Vitae. It's exquisite. <laughs> herbs and herbs. One is right, one is wrong. <laughs> that's the right. That's the right way to think of it. My way is the right way, of course. Well, the uh, the Americans say herbs, and the British say herbs because it's a fucking age in it. Have you seen? Uh... Oh God, what was the stand-up line routine? But I forgot who was who said that. You've never tasted such wine in your own life. Your mind is flooded by a torrent of nuances proper of the most complex of hearts. Cunningham, how the hell does an anarchist piece of shit like you get a vintage like this? Standing up, you reach into your pocket for your smartphone, but to no avail. I must have dropped it. Where could I have dropped my smartphone? Let's burn some Quay Jin. I have no idea if there's Quay Jin in here, but <clears throat> don't spoil it. Before you, a girl dressed in a club uniform lies slumped, barely conscious. All around her, blood stains all over the floor match... 
so many repetitions all over the floor matched the wounds on her small battered body her breathing agitated and arrhythmic, arrhythmic accompanies her faint freezing heartbeat your whole being shudders leaving you with a mixture of dismay disgust and desire Ooh, three d's i like that at her side a sinister figure tends to her lacerations with a quick precise almost surgical movement slowly he turns his head to face you still applying bandages to the still cut open cuts his eyes hidden behind round red lenses her unnaturally pale complexion confirms what you knew the moment you set foot in the bathroom kindred when you open your mouth about to ask what the hell's going on the girl's eyes widen they're coming from <clears throat> eddie izzard that's the one thank you eddie izzard love uh, eddie's routine there they right now I, th I think eddie izzard is uh goes by they uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The bespectacled man turns his face towards her again, or she, I think, uh, with a gloved, slightly bloodstained hand twirls his mustache, oiling it with a young woman's vitae. Easy now, my young vine. No one else is going to hurt you tonight. Turning his dark gaze to you again, his words descend slowly, dripping like the blood from the girl's wounds. As long as I am here, no one will harm the harvest. What the? Get me out of here, Christoph. Get me out. Her plea is interrupted by the man who, with a deft gesture, injects a vial into her arm. Sleep now, my dear. Fear is an awful shade. What's going on here? An unfortunate incident, young Rose. Nothing more. Behind the injected drug... Oh, behind the injected drug effects, the girl seems to be struggling to express something. They've... They've been... Who did this to you? Shh, enough, monsieur. Our get mon cour, mon cour? I don't know how to pronounce that. Our guests would dare, wouldn't dare lay a hand on you. Removing the hair from his face and in the process smearing it with blood, the man proceeds to caress the young woman's face. Get away from her right now. She will die without me, and that is a price I am not willing to pay, young Rose. I'm cold, Christophe. Taking another vial, a very small red one, Christophe uncorks it and holds it up to the girl's mouth, murmuring something. Drink, my sweet vine. The storm has been hard on you, but I'm here. Who are you? And who has done this? You already know my name. Tenderly caressing the girl's head, the bespectacled man turns to you. I am the vintner, the keeper of all heartless souls. And like my forefathers before me, I promise them eternal life. I am the one in charge of turning the water of life into wine, and I take care of my garden. You are the dometer of all the ghouls of the heartless? Ghouls that you then bleed to make the wine? I trust your appreciation will not become an accusation, young Rose. You know well the criminal beauty of our existence. And I am not an animal. I never harvest an unwilling vine. That is why the wine is so exquisite. It is not tainted with violence. So are you going to tell me what happened here? A very unfortunate incident with some extremely unpleasant clients. You're lying. I assure you I do not, ma petite fleur. My <laughs> small flower. Oh, uh, man. Manipulation plus wits moderate. And are you... <clears throat> Success again. Some Somehow I have not failed a single role so far. The man's face darkens and his expression tightens into a grimace of disgust. Also, by the way, I gotta say already, this is a great way of introducing vampires in this game. You start as a mortal... Then you switch over to Diane, you get introduced to ghouls, kind of, and learn a little bit about Vitae and stuff like that. Not until now. From tonight onwards, who knows? My poor vines. Tonight there should be only one change in this shithole. The new regency of the Camarilla. And this kind of things would never be done by an agent sent by the prince. Someone else is making a move for the heartless. If you have finished judging us, I recommend that you go back to the bar and wait for the rest of your party. Cunningham is waiting for you upstairs. Maybe I should give him that voice. It's a little bit too late now, because he's already finished. He's already finished. Oh, of 
course you're gonna have to watch this as a as a Camarilla kindred. A sort of oh, the mockery of the ank that the anarchists took as their own symbol, as in opposition to the Camarilla, showing it with such pride is an unmistakable sign that they fear nothing, neither the Second Inquisition nor us. Unconscious imbeciles, today's meeting shall settle this matter. The first thing Gabriel will do when this place comes under our domain will be to tear this insult to a good taste off the wall. I think I'm going to use that word, voice for her. Can't just have my own voice for everyone. I talked to this dude over here. A mountain of a man stands between you and the entrance to the VIP so zone. Although he doesn't look at it, look it at first glance, he's armed. Good evening, miss. I am deeply sorry, but Mr. Cunningham has just informed me that all the arrangements for your meetings are not ready yet. I would ask you to wait in a little longer, please. It seems that everyone is late for their commitments today. It was predictable. This is what we get for dealing with anarchists. I like that she's using the word anarchist instead of anarchs. Nice. Also, by the way, while I'm here, I'm going to thank everyone watching for showing up. This is Friday. I know Fridays are not the ideal day to watch a stream. Uh, really happy we could have this uh, this happening because it's been such a long time since I streamed last. And uh, I really wanted to get back into it a little bit. A faint, almost imperceptible trail of blood. Something or someone has been dragged along the floor while bleeding. The trace comes from inside a cloakroom. Someone has gone to great lengths to try to erase it. Well, let's go inspect the cloakroom then, shall we? Locked, of course. Disgusting. Oh, what about this? No, apparently not. Can I get in over here? No. Vines, an odd name for the cattle. I agree. Very odd name, but nice. He's a vintner. He, he makes wine. So, of course, he would call them... Uh, grapes. Oh, Conning grapes would have been pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, last stream was Nitro. That was ages ago. Man, that was... That's all... Oh my god, that's almost a year ago. Yeah, 9th of July. No, 10th of July. I was celebrating my anniversary. Oh my god, this... It's my three... Is it? Is it three year anniversary coming up? Jesus Christ. Uh... I guess I'm gonna do something with that. <laughs> I will try to. Actually, this is great. I'm I'm getting back into the flow of of streaming. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do on my anniversary stream? I kind of want to play Blood Hunt, to be honest. <laughs> oh man. Oh oh. The uh the green screen uh the the it it registers my teeth as being green. That's uh I don't know if I should feel bad about that. Let me actually see if I can uh if I can uh. Alter that slightly. Is he chroma key? I go a little lower. Looks like I have braces. There we go. That's better. Not that my teeth are extremely pearly white, but they're not green. Your bosses don't just don't. Oh, the young woman behind the bar radius vitality. Her clear blue eyes, almost hidden behind long eyelashes, move slowly and carefully, scanning the glasses she cleans with subtle movement. I like that. There's different uh, descriptions based on who you're playing. Your bosses don't just pay you with money, do they, sweetheart? Under all those layers of cheap perfume and booze, I'm getting traces of your last drink. A ghoul waitress saving some troubles, of course. Poor soul. How may I help you tonight, miss? Tell me, pretty eyes, how is the evening progressing? Anything remarkable you'd like to confess? A sudden flush in her cheeks colors her pale complexion as she hears your compliment. Your influence over the kind continues to surprise you night after night. I I only serve drinks to customers, miss. I don't see it. I don't hear and I don't ask questions. Come on, a whole night behind the bar. Words are sure to find their way into your ears and effortlessly, I dare say. Those who frequent these places rely on the drink to whisper the darkest truths to the most innocent ears. Blood Hunt is fun, but really hard. I can imagine. I can definitely... And people have been playing it for a long time, too. So I'm going to come in completely fresh. I am so upset that I have not... I, I, I touched it. I played it for, like, 15 minutes. But I am so bad at these kind of games. And now I really want to get back into it. 
I might, I might get in trouble, miss. Presence all straightforward. No one needs to know. Tell me what ails you tonight. Please don't fail this one. Success, of course. Keep on rolling tens, baby. As your eyes go slightly pink, you feel the barmaid's knees weaken at your words, charged with the innate power of the Clan of the Rose. Tonight, tonight some new clients came in, strangers. Strangers. i never seen them before. They didn't use the door, and suddenly they were inside. Someone must have snuck them in, and they scare me, miss. Describe them to me. They are a man and a woman. They are dressed in suits, black. They are like you, miss. There's no one like me, girl. Remember that. Thank you for everything. Oh, I see. Clearly something is very wrong. Tonight should have been a quiet night, a mere courtesy visit, a show of good intentions. And yet individuals from outside the Camarilla have managed to sneak into the Heartless. As soon as Tobias and Aiden arrive, we need to put Cunningham in his place and get out of here. I think I should investigate a bit more. Let's go talk to the others. Odd how die roll here is better than Swan Song. Uh, I, look, Swan Song, I think I, I can. Oh no, they they're gone. They're gone. I didn't realize. Swan Song is. I failed so many times. <clears throat> Someone commented recently that they they didn't have the same. They, they were um, dr they were running out of blood and they kept drinking from people and they didn't realize they didn't like th their suspicion level rose and they didn't notice any problems. I'm very happy for you that you didn't fail all your rolls because literally every freaking roll was like, I, I have to boost two willpower to even have a chance of succeeding with this. And then, oh, it's 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 a draw or they boosted their roll and won automatically. And if it was a draw, I guess we're going to have to roll. A die roll comes in. Uh, I have no idea if I win or not until it tells me I won. Hmm, not happy about that. I run an RTX 370 Ti and an Intel i7. Will Bloodhunt run on your hardwares? Probably, probably. I have no idea. If you have a 3070, not, no problem, no problem. I don't have that and it should definitely work. It's nice, it's free to play, it's on Steam. Give it a go. Um, really happy about it being free to play, by the way. Absolutely exquisite, I couldn't help but finish it. Maybe I could just wait for my coterie here. I guess I don't have the desire to look around this filthy place any longer. No, actually, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can lower my hunger a little bit. Can I drink from someone? How about Johnny Boy? I could interact with a dance floor. Actually, let's see what happens if I do that. It's 4.45 a.m. If this was in Sweden, the sun would be going up at this time. <laughs> Through the rhythm of the music, you see several people dancing wildly. A distant feeling of nostalgia grips your heart. How long has it been since the last night I was able to have fun with no strings attached, without thinking about what would happen next? When Gabriel brought me into this world, I thought immortality would be the perfect excuse to be forever happy, yet nothing... <clears throat> Which is free on stream? Um, Blood Hunt. Blood Hunt, the MOBA game that is kicking off, is free to play on Steam. Can strongly recommend getting it. It is one of the better titles out right now. I I've heard. I haven't played it myself. Zach Riley, the clumsy young man clearly infatuated by your presence, is having a drink with his friend. Both are very sorry. Both are a very sorry sight. Dirty, sweaty, and sticky, sipping more and more alcohol amidst laughter and wailing. And yet you would trade yourself for them in a heartbeat. You would leave behind everything you had to spend one last night as a mortal woman again. Come on, we don't have time to waste with kind. Alright, there we go. Uh, DJ. Nah. I don't think I can drink from the DJ anyway. Oh, you got. You can play. You can play Bloodhound on the phone. Oh my God! All right, good luck with your restudy. Thank you, Skeleton King. Thank you for dropping by. Good luck with your restudy. Uh, Raven Shadows. This game is the winner of the Vampire Jam of 27, 2019, <laughs> 2021. Uh, third try. Uh, Heartless Lullaby. It is free. Um, actually, hold on. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drop a link to to the website where you can get all these games. Uh, it's your jam VTM. I'll write that. Uh, I'll put it over me down here so you can go play these games yourself there was a vampire jam basically uh vamp jam uh they had a, people had a month to make a uh game i keep saying uh a lot where's berlin 
Boolean sans FB, that's my font. Uh, bold. Here we go. This is a little bit small, I'll make it bigger. But basically there's, I think, over 80 games uh, that you can play. All free to play, I think. And uh, the this is the winner. So uh, yeah, Raven, check, check this game out. It's, it's really good. They had a month to make this, it's really good. Kind of think that maybe they were working on it before. But yeah, uh, this is called um, this is called uh, Heartless Lullaby. This is the winner. The chat is up here. I'm gonna move them a little bit here. Sorry, the chat is gonna be barely readable if you're watching this this vod, but it's as good as it's gonna get. Also, again, hope the mouth sync is working fine. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's. Uh, I don't have a desire to look around this filthy place any longer. Now I'm playing as Zack again. Fuck, man, I'm too drunk. You notice that it's been a while since Johnny said he was going to the toilet. You couldn't have fallen asleep there, could you? Okay, let's uh, go talk to Johnny boy. Hope this is visible. I'm gonna... This is a link. So, right here. This is the link to, to try out the games. So click on my chest. Oh, you can't click on my chest, but behold my mighty chest and uh, you will find the uh, <laughs> the address to, to where you can download these games. Again, over 80, over 80 games of Vampire the Masquerade. We are blessed. Great initiative by World of Darkness. All, cap all caps are bastards. Yeah, I'm gonna start. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, we got a little bit of paper here. A flickering light coming from the garbage can catches your attention. It's Johnny Boy's cell phone and his wallet. What's this idiot doing? Well, it's not here anymore. And yeah, yeah, let's not pick up the cell phone, by the way. Screw that. Is the other bathroom open? It looks to be. Oh, blood stain. T radical, dude. On the floor, a pool of blood that looks fresh captures your attention. In the center of it, something shines with golden sparkles. Someone must have dropped it during a fight. It dropped what? Okay. My favorite client to play as a player, Galador. Great question. Uh, confused it with Out for Blood. Ooh, Out for Blood. Uh, wait, Out for Blood is. Oh, that's the yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, Choose Your Adventure game. That's that's cool. I'm glad right now while listening to the stream. Oh, great, great, glad to hear it. Man, uh, I, I really I really want to play uh, Blood Hunt, so that's probably gonna be what I'm playing on my anniversary stream. Uh, my favorite client to play, uh, the night <laughs> belongs to Nos Nosferatu. Uh, I really like Nosferatu, but my favorite client to play is um, Tsimitsi, Tsimish, or however you wanna pronounce that, and uh, God, uh, I have so many different ones I like. Uh, I'll... La Zombra. Uh, I like the Sabbat in general. I like the clans for the Sabbat. Uh, so La Sombra, Tsimitsi, Tremere. Um, can play a really grimy Ventru. I used to play <laughs> one of my absolute favorite characters uh, when I was young that I made. I didn't get to play that much. It was a Ventru IT boom uh, con man. He would he would sell shares in IT companies. <laughs> that was his thing. So he, he he worked out of his car and he 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 started he did a bunch of startups and sold shares in them and then just crashed the companies and, and left. Uh, absolutely and I made this character in like 2004 or something. I have not played Road of Sin. Oh Road of Sin too, yes. Um good question. Uh, yeah, probably Road of Sin. Uh, I was saying I haven't played Road of Sin, but that's a that's a that's a road, a path. Um, old clan or new clan? New clan, Samitsi. I actually vastly prefer new clan, Samitsi. I like the fact that they are so cultureless. I think that honestly, uh, I think the Lasombra should be that as well. Lasombra, I never really took as they only they were only dedicated to the Sabbat until the Sabbat wasn't going to work anymore. But the Tsimitsi or Tsimish, uh, they killed their their uh, antediluvian. I was gonna say Primark. That's a completely different fandom. By the way, I've I've been getting into uh, Brava Alpha Boost stuff uh, lately. Uh, some more. Their Hunter, the parenting is so good. It's so it's a perfect balance of madness, funny, and and uh, and um, and good and like really really good acting. But um, the Tsimitsi, I always felt like they really shouldn't have much of a like historical cultural attachment because they killed that, right? So there's all about 
uh, breaking free. We're not part of a clan where we're free individual vampires. So, so I was I was like that about Simitsi. Um and I also like f- flesh crafting a lot as well. Um, but Sombra I like because they're the darker Ventru. Uh, they're kind of ruthless. Uh, very, very interesting clan in general. I wasn't much for seafaring when I was younger, but it's grown on me. And Tremere, I just, I, I love the pyramid, and I love, ma- I love magic. I love all kinds of stuff about magic. I really like o- 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 occultism, um, any of any kind of stuff, like whether or not it's Kabbalah or or Wicca or anything else in between. Chaos magic is is really cool stuff. Anyway, it's locked by my Nandy card readers. I can't go there. Uh, but I like to play all clans. It would be easier to, to ask me which clans I don't like to play, and there are no clans I don't like to play. I don't like to play Thin Bloods. Uh, I don't like Thin Bloods in general, um, and that's mostly because of Revised Edition and how Revised Edition kind of imprinted on me that Thin Bloods are a sign of the end times. And I always, growing up, I always put a lot of points into Generation because I always felt like, yeah, potent blood, I'm an old vampire. So. So, so uh, Thin Bloods are kind of the antithesis of that. And I don't like Thin Blood Alchemy because it's kind of weird. It's weird. I don't like that. It's unpredictable. Calls a monster, looks at you reluctantly, watching you approach the entrance to the VIP area. What the hell do you want now? Uh, have you seen my friend? Yes, your drunk friend is upstairs at the express invitation of the boss. And couldn't you let me through, man? My buddy's really fucked up. I gotta take him home. No way. Without an invitation, no one passes through here. Words from the boss. Fuck. All right, we gotta do some easy, some quick puzzle solving. Really upset that this little thing broke. Because uh, I have two poles holding up my green screen behind me, and one of them just snapped right before I was going to start stream. Yeah, Thin Blood Alchemy is a V5 thing. But even then, um, there is... Time of Thin Blood. Let's see if I can find it. Now this is uh, Kane's chat. Kane's ch- chosen. Excellent V20 book, by the way. One of my absolute favorites. I love the 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 black hand. Not the true black hand, mind you. Uh, Chain the Beast. That's not. Where's the red signs? Where's the Time of Thin Blood? Uh, is it over here? Yeah. No, yeah. There we go. Time of Thin Bloods. This is gonna be. Yeah, you can barely see this. Time of Thin Blood is one of the better uh, source books for a very, very late era revised edition. And um, it's good. It's really well written. Let's see who wrote it. Uh, it also has a, a cool intro story with Dr. Netchurch, a uh, character I really enjoy. Uh, Dean Shamshak and Sarah Rourke. 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 Conceptual design and development, Justin Achille. Who's still working on World of Darkness stuff. But yeah, this was gearing up to the end times. So um, it's very late era. Like, that's when they first started introducing Thin Bloods in, in the sense that they had uh, someone who's pregnant, a, a pregnant vampire, all those kind of things, or pregnant Thin Blood, or a pregnant Kaitif, as they were called it back then. Uh, I. I'll, I'll, I'll put the cards on the table. I don't know why the term KTIF isn't used anymore. I don't know if it's offensive. If it is, I, I apologize. But they use Thin Blood a lot more, which seems very derogatory as well. Obviously a derogatory term invented for them. Actually, here I am talking about that when I'm sitting at a computer, I could literally just Google it. KTIF, let's see here. KTIF or KTIF meaning. A contemptible or cowardly person, archaic. Okay, doesn't seem to be minority or racially related, so I'm gonna keep using it. It's still used. Good. Is the video and audio out of sync for it? Oh, Xenomorphy, thank you for pointing that out. I hope, um, how is my mouth moving before my, my, uh, uh my mouth? I will still use Kitev. Because uh, I can delay my camera uh, on the render delay. Uh, what if I do it zero? What if we go back to zero? How is this? Uh, give me, let's see a render delay. Give me a heads up because now we have zero render delay. Is this better or worse? The video is ahead of the audio. Okay, the video is ahead of the audio. Um, let me see here. 
that must mean I've made it even worse. So I'm gonna go up to 200 milliseconds render delay again. And audio is faster than video for me. Is it cloudless? Okay, how is this? Ah, e, u, u, ah. How is that? Is that worse or better? Could a magic only cage have worked? I'm not sure how you mean magic. Top hat old and worn out lies abandoned on the table. The guy who was here earlier was wearing it. Where did he go? Out of curiosity, you move a little closer and notice a playing card sticking up from under the hat on which someone has written with a permanent marker. I should read what is written. Audio still seems faster than the video by a bit. Now audio is later. Huh. How about 150 milliseconds? We'll try this. Um, let me know if it's if it's worse. Now audio is later. Now audio is after the video. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep trying this out. Uh, I really I don't like this. What I'm gonna do before next stream is that I'm gonna record and run it in my video editing tool because then I can see where how I need to adjust the audio. Uh, oh no no it's uh, app guaranteed on my end guaranteed on my end because I have I'm using my phone as a camera uh, and I'm using a separate uh, microphone uh, for for recording with some mixers so I'm pretty sure that that's the uh, but I can adjust the sync so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to after this is done I'm gonna record a little piece I'm gonna try to match mouth and audio see the difference and for next stream I will have figured out how much I need to delay either audio or video uh, but don't worry, uh, I really appreciate you guys giving me the feedback. There won't be a solution so fast, you can ignore it, okay. Uh, yeah, just, just just look at the game instead of looking at this ugly mug. I'll just... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll move my mouth down here so you can't hear, you can't see my mouth when I'm talking. This is perfect, right? <laughs> now, I'll, I'll be up here. Let's see. I should read what is written. Carefully, you pull the card off from under the hat. The calligraphy is very elaborate, all written in cursive and with elegant finials at the end of each other. Actually... Uh, yes, I'm going to calibrate the setup. What I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do on the question of which clans I like to play, I'm going to say which clans have I learned to enjoy to play because there was a lot of clans uh, growing up that I was kind of wary about. One of them is La Sombra, primarily because of the, the sailing part. I really, really didn't care for pirates when I was younger. Um, but also Bano Hakim. Uh, reading the Bano Hakim clan book, I uh, should have it. Unfortunately, it's called Asamite still there, but by the way, uh, if you're new to Vampire the Masquerade, uh, want to learn more about a clan, strongly recommend the revised edition clan books. They're very, very good. It's here. This is the best clan book released. The best. I have read all 12. I haven't read Cappadocian and Bali. I actually took them out because I'm going to write, I'm going to make videos about the Bali and Cappadocians. The best. In my opinion, the best. Uh, it's really well written, but also it has so much information about Bali, about the Banu Hakim, about how they work. It's a really, really good book. So Banu Hakim is a clan that I've grown to really, really like uh, over the time. Um, and I, I used to be a huge Gangrel fan. Uh, these days I struggle a bit with that clan. Um, Malkavians, I, I've always been kind of allergic to Malkavians due to, due to poor experiences with fish milks. Uh, but I, I've grown to like them as well. It's really difficult for me to find any clan that I don't like. I don't know if you answered already, but what is your favorite edition? I would have said 20th Anniversary Dark Ages. 20th Anniversary Dark Ages is a masterpiece. It's a really well-made book. Um, I I really, really... <laughs> you hear Lazombra, you appear. Ah, uh, man. Lazombra coming out of the shadows. Uh, I really, really like Lazombra as well. Um, best edition is very easy for me to say. This has become a staple comment for me, by the way. I'm, I'm sure people... Who, are tired of hearing this, especially um, when I've been doing interviews and stuff. But this wonderful book, revised edition, Vampire the Masquerade, the best, in my opinion. Revised, third edition, the best. Uh, 
There are certain things I don't like about revised edition, but I would blame that more on second edition, on baggage from second edition. And revised edition was around for such a long time that some of the books, like I think it was Chaining the Beast or uh, Blood. Man, that doesn't really narrow it down at all. Uh, I reviewed it a, a long time ago. I reviewed um, Beast something, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it was a book about paths. It was absolutely garbage. Um, and, and it had it talked about terrorism. And it was like this, the Tokyo Sarin gas attack was done by vampires. Really, really bad book in general. Um, so some of the worst books were released in the revised era, but some of the best books were also released because you had the revised uh, era clan books. Uh, the, this book, the artwork in this book is my the collection of my absolutely, absolute favorite art book. This is the original book I bought in 99, I think, or 98. Really, really nice art. I love the art in this book. I'm gonna take out my absolutely favorite picture, which is a contentious picture because it's, uh, it's by an artist that I hate love. I love him as a person, probably. I haven't spoken to him. He, he's, he's cool. But this one by Leif Jones. Leif Jones is notorious uh, artist. This is my favorite drawing of all time in Vampire the Masquerade. I, I don't know what it is about it, uh, but it's, it's, it's one of the ones I really, really enjoy. Uh, I can show it again later. You can also find all this art on uh, on Storyteller's Vault, by the way. It's all uh, publicly available for, for use in your in your content creation. But it has so many, so many good drawings. So many good drawings. This one is amazing. I love this. Uh, the character creation, they call her... I didn't name her Veronica or Victoria, I don't recall. Um, let's see here. They create a character... They have a lot of illustrations of her. I really enjoy this character. Um, where did they make her? Uh, uh, Veronica. Her name is Veronica. And also, the first picture that I saw that got me into this game, I, I as a young man of 13, I walked into bookshop and I opened this weird looking book and this picture came up and I was like oh boy I feel strange uh, and I bought the book embarrassing I know I was 13 uh, I think Bruja and Tremere are pretty cool a friend of mine has kind of got things set up to run a game that I got a Tremere detective in if I can get it to actually run I oh, oh, hope you can get a game to run Siren Gas Attack was clearly done by Salty Spurn Reality Deviant Wannabes yeah I just I just hardline don't want real life stuff especially in the 1900s i don't want that to be caused by vampires um yeah uh revised edition i it's not going to bring anything new to the table if you're used with v20 used to v20 i have v20 here as well um funded and financed by my wonderful patrons um patreon uh i like this book a lot i think this is the perfect book for a veteran storyteller uh v20 as a rule set is is very uh it's probably the better rule set to be honest I, I don't know about systems that much but it seems more balanced but v20 is too much for new players in my opinion and i think the biggest hurdle to getting into vampire the masquerade is finding a core rule book that captures you without overwhelming you and i feel like the the vampire 20 20th anniversary edition is uh is a little too much for new players also I may be grumpy, I may be a grognard when I say this, but I don't think new players should know about Bali. I don't think they should know about True Bruja. I don't think they should know about Kia Sid or any of the other very weird, very, very bloodlines because that's meant to be used as like cool little story hooks for the storyteller. That's how they were introduced into the game. Having them just listed there really, really reduces the magic of the clans in my opinion. Now. Now, I am not going to fault White Wolf for making this decision. And the reason I'm not faulting them for that is because this book was never intended as an introduction to Vampire the Masquerade. This is another thing I keep saying. V20 was released for fans as a last, last hurrah, as a last hurrah. As, e, as a celebration of 20 years of Vampire the Masquerade, they released this book a complete collection of everything up until now that you needed to play as a, as, a, as a kind of sign of gratitude to their fans. It was never intended to be continued after that. Uh, I, I believe Onyx Path did an amazing job with the stuff they released. Again, children, Kane's children 
Who is Kane's children? Yeah, Kane's children. Uh, Kane's chosen. There we go. Kane's chosen V20 book. It's about the black hand, not the true black hand, not the Talmahera or however you call them. Hate those guys. This is about the the heart of the Sabat. This book sold me on Sabat. I, I I was ready to join the war on the sort of Kane after that. Um, but the best way to introduce new players uh, is, I agree. Xenomorphy, I agree. Letting them play Bloodlines, excellent introduction. You might not get become as powerful as this guy, but it's a great introduction to the to the to the jihad, to to uh, to the setting. I think Bloodlines is Bloodlines is lighting a bottle. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, Galdor, I missed your message. My first video game was Werewolf Shadow Lord because I wanted to play a very social, backstabbing, seductive character. Only later learned about vampire and saw that my design was more fitted to Twerdor and not an eco terrorist of Gaia. I have opinions about Werewolf. Um, I don't. I don't fundamentally think it's a bad game, but I do have a 55-minute long video where I talk about the things I don't like about it. Um, I am very much looking forward to W5. Sorry for pausing the game right now, by the way, but it feels like a good time to shoot the shit a little bit um i have very strong opinions about some of the aspects of werewolf that just that hasn't aged well and i i again I, I can never blame people in the 90s for things that i find unappealing today that's like going back to 94 and me like man this movie is really offensive like it was made in 94 it's almost 20 years old uh things people change tastes change i i will never fault someone for doing that but I, I do believe that Werewolf really needs to uh, really needs to be updated, and I hope that they're 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 implementing some of the changes I suggested. Shadow Lords, one of my favorite tribes. Uh, Shadow Lords and uh, Glasswalkers. Stargazers was my favorite when I was a kid because they were cool and they had kung fu and they were like chill, which I really appreciated amongst the werewolves. But Stargazers are unfortunately no longer a member of the Garou Nation. Uh, and I feel like it's kind of... I feel like I shouldn't really be playing a Stargazer. I, I am much more comfortable with a Shadow Lord, for example. And uh, that's this personal taste. I would never fault someone for playing uh, for, for, for playing a tribe they're, they're distant from, but Stargazers are kind of... They come from a culture that's very unfamiliar to me, so I feel like I would need to do some research before I played any of those. But Werewolf is is a flawed diamond. I really like Werewolf, but I really, really hope that Werewolf 5th Edition is going to fix some of the things that makes it very difficult for me to play and enjoy the game today. How, I will, however, say that Werewolf fandom has some of the most passionate, some of the most friendly and welcoming people in the entire World of Darkness community. So thank you, you know who you are. Anyway, let's read the calligraphy here. <clears throat> it's a list of songs. No easy way out. Love will tear us apart. Have a drink on me. Dust in the wind. Pause the access. N L H D. New old. New old. The. Hmm. What if I go to the DJ and ask him to play that? They're doing a total cultural update with real tribal elders helping to rewrite. That's really good. Uh, I think that's really good. It's unfortunate that Werewolf... Uh, the writers of Werewolf, and I think Mage as well, struggled a lot with this. Vampire got away with it because Vampire has so little connection to human culture. But both Werewolf and Mage are steeped in actual cultural expressions. And I feel like the guys who wrote this didn't really do they did research i mean god they god knows they did research but in the 90s it's kind of hard to do that stuff so kudos to the writers at the time but i think it was phil Bricado. um he he said in an interview i, I listened to him he's a very cool guy one of the original writers of mage uh satirio satirio i i don't quite remember his his other his other name Phil Bocato, um said that we were a bunch of white guys in our 20s with uh, a library and, and a dictionary. And I, th I think that's good to keep in mind. Not saying that a bunch of white guys can't do it, can't do a great game. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just saying that there were layers between them and the stuff they were writing about. And that made it hard. So whenever we look back at these old things, we want to keep that in mind. Yeah, Vamp Games, gotta check it out. This game is great. Um, I have a link down here. 
uh, to the Itch.io page. They did a Vampire Jam uh, 2021, hugely successful. Almost 90 titles were released. And this is the winner that we are playing, which I'm hopefully going to finish today on stream. The DJ is still very into his music, much more than the rhythm would invite you to think. He doesn't even have his headphones on. Uh, DJ, can you hear me? Shoo! The sudden shout startles you slightly, but the DJ smirk reassures you. You didn't understand the reference, but at least the DJ's attention is on yours. Have you seen my buddy? The guy, the, I know where my buddy is. Uh, sure, dude, you end up a company. No idea. Okay, I have this little list of songs. I don't know what to do with it. But yeah, they, lots of really cool map games. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't like werewolf lore. The werewolves of cosmic purpose is just giving the were the werewolves of cosmic purpose is just boring. I agree with you. I actually think that um, I actually think that's one of the biggest downfalls of werewolf is how extremely insular they are as a group. Because every almost every other f like mage has very okay. Sorry, game. I'm gonna have to talk about this because after all, I'm a lore channel. Vampire. First of all, in Vampire, mortals play a hugely important role. They are... You can't have Vampire without mortals. And that's one of the downsides of later Revised Edition. It became more and more about the Vampires versus Vampires, rather than the whole humanity, old versus young, all that stuff. In Mage, it's... Mortals don't play that big of a role. Um, consensus, of course, you always constantly have to think about paradox and consensus but the mages have a lot of inner conflict with each other there no one is really right in mage that's one of the things that made it very difficult for me as a kid um because i i, I struggled with finding someone that i could 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 be like these are the good guys um and obviously mage doesn't really have that uh so so mage was always very difficult for me to get into now that i'm older and slightly smarter mage is one of my favorite settings because literally everyone is right and everyone is wrong so you had that going for you werewolf you have the garu nation which is this tight and it's clear in the writing that the garu nation is flawed incredibly flawed they are they're going to lose the war but you're never really given the incentive to find an alternative solution to the garu nation which of course uh, you can you can read as being like all right um, it's up to the players to find this but there's no supplements or released um, no alternative is ever really presented to be a viable solution to this uh, and you're 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 kind of there's many, many things built into the system that makes interacting with mortals uh, practically impossible. Your rage in uh, <laughs> uh, technocracy... Eh, they've, oh, all right, okay. Pet peeve. The technocracy has been giving a lot of... Uh, whitewashing? No, what's, what's the term? When you, like, wipe away all the, all the bad stuff lately. And I, I blame the Onyx Path because technocracy, they're fascists. Uh, now, if you believe that's fine, at least that's how they were originally presented. Although they, they made a lot of good stuff. I don't want to get into that discussion. I agree. There's a lot of good stuff that the technocracy have done, uh, but it is really about like uh, total control or no control or everyone is fighting over control of reality, basically. So that's why I think there's no good guys. Now, uh, werewolf. Uh, right. So werewolf. In Werewolf, Rage, <laughs> yeah, I wish Mage had easier mechanics as well. Uh, werewolf being cursed, the Bider Scratch. I really want that too. I think Werewolfism should be a curse. That kind of feels like a thing for World of Darkness. But um, Werewolves have a Rage value uh, in older editions. And basically, if your Rage value is equal to or higher than the mortal you're facing, that mortal will automatically try to avoid you. This is probably the dumbest decision they made in the entire game. Like everything else you can work with, but this is basically making it, if you have an Arun, no one on this planet is going to want to interact with you unless they're kinfolk, Garu, or other supernaturals. So they kind of just chop that at the feet. There's no incentive to raise your rage because the amount of people in the world, there's some statistics uh, presented somewhere, I don't recall quite where. The amount of people in the world that have higher than five willpower that are mortals, it's like less than a percentage of the population. It's like less than half a percent. So it's like, all right, cool. We're going to make a game where humans have no... It, does, it, it really does feel like wish fulfillment power fantasy game, um, if I want to be really crass about it. And that's fine to a certain degree. 
um, but it really makes a lot of the higher role playing very strained. You have to make a lot of accommodations as a storyteller for Werewolf. Flawed, well intentioned extremists. That's a nice way of putting the technocracy. You don't know if it's due to the effect of the alcohol, it's just getting prettier by the minute. Another one, Zach Riley. A terrible combination of your full name and enunciated with such an icy tone makes your goofy face come off in one fell swoop. Uh, no, so sorry, have, been, have we been introduced? No, but you and your friend ha have made this bar your personal confessional, and don't ask me why, but you refer to each other by your full names. Sounds like something we could have done. I'm sorry, I really am. Don't bother, it's part of the job. Hey, do you know how I could get into the VIP zone? You notice how the waiter stands upright and her gaze darkens. The VIP area is by invitation only. So why did they take Johnny up there? Your words hit her with a force she did not expect. Unable to hide her surprise, the hitherto stoic wait. <clears throat> it's not possible, you don't... Shaking her head briefly as if to dismiss such thoughts, she immediately reverts to her usual tone. If management had taken your friend upstairs, there must be a reason. Perhaps a favor due to the tremendous expense you have made tonight. Don't give it any more thought. Enjoy the evening. Johnny can barely stand up. What kind of a favor could someone that drunk receive? Look, Zach, that's as far as I can read. If you want to ask someone what management might want to do with your friend, ask Kristoff, our superintendent. He's on the terrace. You'll recognize him easily. He's wearing round glasses with tinted lenses. Thank you. You didn't tell me your name, by the way. I told you enough tonight, Riley. Okay, so we need to find the guy with the glasses. It seems to be the only civic way to pass you outside of the bar. All right, let's go. What do you think you're doing? Restricted area. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> I don't know. We gotta find a terrace. Can we find it up here? Oh, hello. The cloakroom shutters up, and behind it, a young woman watches you shyly. When she catches your glance, she stalls slightly and with a shy smile turns to you. She's very shy. Do <clears throat> what I never got, if there's an overarching true mythology, mage, werewolf, and vampire, all have different ones which are kind of factual by the lore. Uh, so, Galador, I would say that the best way to approach World of Darkness, and might get some flack from this, is to sort of assume that they're all slightly different parallel realities. Because there's no way you can get a consistent image of how things work. You just can't. Um, there are slight differences in, in the lore that just makes it very, very unlikely that it's all set in the same world. I think that's the right way to do it because ultimately once you have a buck ton of different settings out, I'm just looking at my bookshelf here, Keeping track of everything must be an absolute nightmare, especially if you're hiring free freelance writers, which is what they were doing during Revised. So don't think of it as a, as, as a whole. And I think the, 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 the best setting, if you really want a setting uh, that covers mo mostly everything, either Werewolf or Mage. Um, I don't know if there was a book that tried to tie them all in. Uh, seems like a doomed attempt. Uh, but Mage and Werewolf are the most uh, detailed books in, in, or games in terms of settings. Vampire really doesn't give a toss about any of the other uh, settings. Mage and Werewolf work well together. They mesh. Um, Changeling has close to nothing to do with the other games. Wraith. Wraith and Vampire work really well together. Um, but Wraith have, it might work. Demon don't even don't even demon is a completely different game hunter hunter i would argue is probably a game that would work with almost any other splat no problem which is might be the reason why they decided to make hunter 5 the girl appears to be a couple of years younger than you her smile is strange artificial her movement slow and clumsy you notice that her wrist is bandaged it looks like a recent cure her eyes convey a confused tired sadness speaking of confused and tired i'm getting kind of tired there's a fan book, Days of Fire, wasn't it? Exalted versus World of Darkness. Exalted. I have the original Exalted book here somewhere. Not a fan. I'm sorry, just not a fan of Exalted. I think the setting. I mean, I I was never. I was. Look, I I didn't see Avatar until I was like 20, 
eight. I really like Avatar. But if you grew up watching Avatar, Exalted is like, but not my cup of tea. I, 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 it invites power gaming um, in a scale I've never before witnessed. And I created a character that ended up rolling 20 d10s in unarmed combat. The best way to beat him was to put a stick in his hands because he had nothing in melee. So that was the best way to fight him. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's basically World of Darkness D&D. Oh yeah, you have... Uh... Is this it? No, this is the Book of Nod. Days of Fire. Days of Fire. Lucifer's Writing. Uh, this is probably the only book I didn't read when I did the Demon the Fallen cover. Because I was so tired of that game series by the end of it. Demon the Fallen is the swan song of World of Darkness. I'll let you... Uh, I'll let you sit on that one for a while swan song of world of darkness as demon the fallen which uh i think that's probably the most apt comparison i can make i i i really want to like D demon the fallen i really really want to like it but it makes it so hard <laughs> would have been cool arp absolutely I use crumpled paper i'm sorry i know it's none of my business but is this yours the description of young sweetheart fits you <clears throat> oh that Taking the paper from your hands, she can't help but blush as she opens it and reads its contents. Her cheeks grow redder and redder through the comical point. Tucking her hair back behind one ear, you notice that her right earring is missing. That, that idiot. Excuse me, can I tell you something? I'm all ears. See that bouncer over there, the one in front of the stairs leading to the VIP zone? <sighs> yep, don't tell me that gorilla has. Yeah, he wrote me this, but he didn't have the courage to give it to me, the coward. So I'm approaching my stall at, pardon me, the beginning of the evening for something in his hands, but he turned away before he got here, and since then he hasn't come near me even to say hello. That's a long sentence. Are you two dating? Immediately, the young woman's face turns completely red. N no, I mean, nothing serious. Well, n not at all. Yes, but no, it's complicated. Come on, woman, it's not that big of a deal. If he has written this to you, it seems to me that he's serious, and you seem to like him too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like him, and I owe him a lot. He got me this job, you know. I wasn't in a good place in my life. Felt like everything was ending for me, and he brought me here. He he saved my life, so to speak. Ooh, lots of stuff happening in the chat. Wouldn't LARP not, not be just regular people as they possess them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you possess regular people. You can also have a demonic body. But basically, any kind of Will of Darkness LARP is just regular people uh, most of the time. Just that it means you have angel lore and have a have Kupala be fallen. Kupala is an earthbound, obviously. Um, very strong one. Oh my god, the earthbound. Let me just get the book out of here. This book. This fucking book. The earthbound. What a disappointment. What a massive fart in the wind to end. Demon the Fallen run because my god they waste so much space in that book on absolute nothing. <sighs> I really would have wanted to learn more about the great evils but nope it's poorly written. There's also a demon let me see here I god man this this oh my god is it in this book? There's an earthbound demon I shit you not. Called Shinji. Uh, what's the name of the guy? Is Karu? No, sh name in, in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, hold on, give me a second. Sixteenth uh, uh, Angel NGE uh, Army Cell. Uh, no? Unit zero, unit two. What the hell is the name of that? Shinji... Uh, I don't even know why I'm looking this up because it doesn't really matter. Matter. RL? Tabris? 
Tavris? Kaworu. Shinji Kaworu. Yes. Literally Shinji Kaworu. This is the name of a demon in Demon the Fallen. Shinji Kaworu. Two characters in Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is an Asian, de a Chinese demon, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Vampire takes mythos from many more cultures. I can't think of any culture where Shinji Kaworu is a demon or a god. I do know an anime, and I do know it's not Chinese. Because <laughs> Shinji Kaworu is not Chinese. That's not how you speak Chinese. <laughs> I, I, I can't look it up now, but I am 100% sure it's called Shinji Kaworu. I had a hissy fit on Twitter when I saw it. I'm really happy for you, for both of you. Good luck. Thank you. So, should I go talk to the uh, the guy then, guarding the VIP? No, I don't want to cast to Earth. It was... The thing is, um, it was written in the early 2000s. People had internet. Um, it was a very blatant... Like, who edited that book? It should not have gotten into the book. There, no, no, it's not a coincidence. Shinji Kaworu, not a coincidence. Impossible. That was peak, peak Eva time as well. Uh, let me see if I can find Shinji Kaworu, Demon, uh, The Fallen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, not really want to like it. What are you, are you saying about Chinese cartoons? <laughs> oh man. Oh, it bothered me so much. I don't know if it's in the core book or if it's in, I think it's in the Earthbound book. <clears throat> China? Pretty sure it's in the Earthbound book. Buddhism? It was a very, very ham fisted attempt to be inclusive uh, that just completely flumped it. I don't even know I'm looking this up, but now I'm like, I can't not. Face of Horror. Uh, good music, at least, right now. I really can't look it up on my Twitter because it was like almost two years ago. Um, but the thing is, the combination uh, Shinji Kaworu, which is super weird, uh, it doesn't make any sense in Japanese. It really doesn't. Because uh, his names, you, you don't have a Shinji guess you can take, like, it's just a bunch of nouns if you put them together, which doesn't mean anything. You need verbs and stuff. It's not like Chinese at all. Um, okay, I, I can't find it, but I, I swear on my on, on my on my soul. Uh, I could not be trusted to run a game with a demon name that just become a thing of them always having trouble with tech or possessing computers or something. I've never played demon, so I don't know. Uh, Kings is part of the lore. You have a super fan working out. Yeah, exactly. I think I think it's just someone put it in as a, as a funny joke, but it's aged like bad cheese. Um, I I really don't I, I don't fault them except that I think it's it's it should have been Japanese at least because Shinji Shinji Kaoru does not mean anything in Chinese. What the hell do you want now? Oh my god! Let me fucking can I get her earring back then? I don't think we're going to be playing any more than this game today, unfortunately. <laughs> it's also 11 p.m., I think. Jesus, I think I might have to end the stream soon. Yeah, it's 10 too. Uh, I got 10 minutes left. I hope there's not a lot left in this game. <clears throat> Can I pick up the thing? What's in the cloakroom? Okay, now I got the golden earring. Good. I got maybe 20 minutes tops left. Um, it's Friday, but... I get my uh, my parents-in-law over, so me and the wife are sleeping in the guest room, which is also where I'm recording, so I don't want to stay up too late, because she's got to go to bed. Yep, I'm European, Swedish, 
uh, Swedish. So by the way, uh, if I go have dinner, I want you guys to stay in my room, okay? Because I don't wanna, I don't want you, I don't want you sitting with the family table. Sweden gate, it's hilarious. I am not even gonna, I'm not even gonna defend Sweden. I, it's a cultural thing. I, it doesn't happen that often. It's almost never happened to me. I honestly, I don't even care. It's a cultural thing. I'm not sure you can save in that game. Okay, we're gonna have to finish it. Do you need something, sir? Go uh, on the ring. Is this earring yours? Oh yes, I must have dropped it somewhere. Thank you very much. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to ask her to get into the VIP now. Uh, the young man with the, with the bar, so I'm going to go to the VIP zone with a couple guests. Uh, what's he doing there? I don't know, so I'm telling you what I saw. It's true that he looks slow. No, Johnny boy, what the fuck are you doing? Boom, boom. Let's see here. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, the version of the game is our fault, to be honest, but it's more fun. Ha, <laughs> don't worry. It's, it's, I'm really happy to be, uh, to be streaming with you guys again. It's been such a long time. Yeah, I really hope they make more of this so far. I've been, I've been enjoying this. Uh, maybe add a run function. Uh, and I don't know if, if the roles are, are, are happening or not. Like, only Swedish culture thing I know of is Fika. Yeah, Fika's really nice. We just like to have a Fika together with people. This, it's, Sweden Gate is, uh, is a whole bag of nothing, basically. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my god, let me... Let me get in! Let me get in! Let me in! Can I take his phone? Why did I leave his phone on the floor? That's something I wanna know. Okay, never mind. I guess I can't. But basically, to sum it up, um, one person on Reddit said that the weirdest thing they've ever experienced was how they had to sit in their friend's room while their friend was eating dinner. And then someone else said that it happened to them as well. That person turns out to not be Swedish. Um, but apparently, one person on Reddit sparked this entire contro controversy. And now everyone is saying how rude sweets are for that. Again, it never happened to me. Uh, it seems to be a class issue more than anything else. Upper middle class seem to be doing it more. It's so stupid. It's really so stupid. Because everyone is just dunking on our our, our inability to, uh, to host people properly, basically. Where's the terrace? How do I get to the terrace? Is it outside? It's, it's a dumb thing. Uh, a lot of people are making a big, big thing out of nothing, basically. Okay, I got it. Is the terrace the, uh... Is it here? Has this been a terrace here all this time and I just missed it? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I missed this entire room. Okay. That explains things. What is this? <laughs> Let me in! Shouldn't judge it. It's nothing to judge. And if people think that's offensive, okay. It's our culture. It's just how we are. I don't know. I don't care. If you come over, I'll give you stuff. If you come over unannounced, I'll be like, dude, let me know ahead so I can prepare something. It's kind of rude. Not gonna lie. Kind of rude. Uh, hey, can I get... Can I get in here? So that was the only entrance. Uh, I was blocked from going there earlier. Okay, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Okay, it's a th trio of three. Statue, nice. This is a very cool style. I agree. I'm not. I'm not shitting on the game. Although they should have probably shown a little bit of the outside area through the door. Sitting on a couch, you see the Ellen. She's just going to be accompanied by a man dressed in a vest, gloves, and a red tinted circular glasses. They converse in a rapid, almost unintelligible tone, and you notice tension rising. Creepy fucks. It's him, Kristoff. I should ask him about Johnny. Gathering your courage, you approach the table. Before you can open your mouth, all three turn to you at the same time in your direction. 
Man in suit twists his face, clearly annoyed. You, can't you see that the grown-ups are talking? Kristoff, isn't it? The man in the suit looks at you in astonishment, and out of the corner of your eye you see the anger growing inside him. Something tells you he's not used to being ignored. Uh, who's asking? You feel the eyes of the three piercing you like spears, pinning you on the spot. Your heart begins to pound and you feel your throat constrict, making it hard to breathe. My name is Zach, Zach Riley. I can't find my friend and... The woman lets out a burst of laughter, cutting you off. Kristoff, the man you call to find your... The man you called to find your lost friends. The man who called to find your lost... Oh, okay, she's talking about him. The suited man joins in the laughter of his companion. Please. Raising a hand with an annoyed gesture, Christoph stops the mockery of the suits. Speak, Zach Riley. The, the waitress told me that you would know why Johnny, my friend, has been taken to the VIP zone. He's very drunk. I, I had to take him home. Under the dim lights of the glassed in terrace, Christoph's face take on a faint tone. His thin, taut mouth turned into a slender straight line under his perfect mustache trembles slightly. Are the statues part of the puzzle? I have no idea. Upstairs, you said, to the VIP zone. What's the matter, Chris? Cat got your tongue. Old Cunningham doesn't tell you things anymore, huh? Silence! The suited couple smiles viciously, looking at the bespectacled man. After a couple of seconds, the woman clicks her tongue and turns to you. Actually, let me, let me check something here. Okay, I didn't have a delay on my microphone. Okay. Tonight is a very special night, honey. Your friend has been honored to be invited to the celebrations. I have no doubt he will be having the time of his life. I'm sure you're dying to go up too, aren't you? I just want to pick up Johnny and go home. It's been a long night. We've had too much to drink and... Enough! The words recede in your throat, burying themselves deep in your stomach when you hear his powerful voice. Enough, both of you. How squeamish, Christoph. Yes, we haven't done anything to him yet. Heaven forfend. This is going to sound arrogant, but could you guys let me up there? I really need to find Johnny. The man in the suit leans back in his chair, and reaching into his inside jacket pocket, you watch as he begins to pull something out, an invitation, no doubt. Before he has been able to remove his hand from the inside of the his garment, Christoph slams his open palm on the table. No, this was not what we had agreed upon. His voice is deep and dark, full of fury, but restrained and gripped. You are sure that at any moment it could explode. The woman nods to the suit and man, and he... And he, dropping the invitation in his coat pocket, snorts in annoyance. Hm. Whatever you say, Mr. Vines. Whatever you say. We're not going to go into your field and shit in the corners, are we? No, of course not. We wouldn't dare. Well, maybe just a little shit. <laughs> and just under a small vine. I like this dialogue. Kristoff is completely still, almost frozen, but you feel his anger. The tension is mounting and you just want to run to get out of there as soon as possible. Don't you ever get the feeling when you're playing one of these games that these are player characters that they've, their own player characters that they've put into the game. I get the feeling that that's the case. Fuck Johnny, fuck. Johnny boy. With a monotonous voice and slow cadence, Kristoff addresses you. Take this handkerchief, Zach Riley. Give it to the waitress. It will be indication enough for her to bring us another bottle. Now get out of here. Right away, sir. boy. Yeah, I really don't think I'll be able to finish this tonight. Um, I'll keep playing until I really have to go, but... Let's see. I'm gonna have to rush the last part of the game. I've been talking for too much. That waitress was over here. No, this is barkeep. Waitress? Waitress is in the coat room. Okay, uh, another one, Zach Riley. I know, sorry, I've been introduced. No. Excuse me, Christoph gave me this. He told me you would know what to do. do bring them a bottle or something? The waitress takes the handkerchief, puts it in her pocket, gives you a last icy look, and takes a bottle from the shelf behind her back. Good luck. And good night, Riley. Making her way to the terrace, the waitress leaves her post. <gasps> now we can get him, get him behind. Sleep calls all Europeans, it's understandable. 
I've been entertained as well. Uh, basic Scholar, this game is, sorry, I don't, uh, I don't have that command, but this game is uh, Heartless Lullaby. It is on itch.io. I have a link right here. This is part of the fan event uh, that they made for uh, Vampire the Masquerade. So this is the winner of that event. And you can also find it on Steam, I believe. Um, so yeah, strongly recommend. This game has been a lot of fun so far. Uh, very, very impressive in the, in the month they made it. It seems a little civic way to pass. Open it. There we go. And off we go. Let's see what we can find. It almost certainly leads to the storage room or the pantry or whatever it's called. Shit, last couple of shots didn't do me any good. Maybe I could go from there to the VIP zone. I have to find Johnny. Now that she's out of the way, you can sneak in what you assume is the storage room. In we go. In and out, quick and easy. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy the chat interactions as well. I really enjoy streaming, to be honest. It's one of the better parts of this community. It was a very good community in general. Rows of coolers filled to the top with bottles of wine. The amount of wine in this place is exaggerated. Compared to the rest of the liquors and drinks, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you have wine in coolers? Red wine should be on shelves. Besides, it's freezing cold in here. Since when did red wine chilled so much? Right? Right? Obviously, I don't drink wine. <laughs> Wooden boxes closed with nails. They have packing slips from different countries. I have no idea what the vast majority of them comes from. But this is some kind of blood running business. Insanely well done dialogue for only a month. Exactly, I agree. That's something I actually, when I stopped writing my little um, very quick choose, choose your own adventure thing that I'm working on, that's the part that really stumbles me. I'm bad at writing dialogue. Uh, this door should be upstairs. I don't have time to waste. Let's go. Exactly, I don't have time to waste. The whole night has led us to this moment. Well, well, gentlemen, where were we? To your right, you can clearly hear Aiden's teeth grinding. His normally calm temperament is on edge. And although you all know that if things were to get out of hand, you would be on the losing end. The young adventurer's blue blood boils in his veins. Before Tobias or even Aiden himself can open their mouths, or inevitably screw up, and inevitably screw up, you decide to make your move. You were going to explain us what the hell's going on here, starting with what happened in the very next room. I thought you were different, that the Heartless wasn't just another pit of senseless violence and vicious savagery. Easy, Diane, mind your words. Before you, Jackson Cunningham, anarchist region of the Heartless, makes himself comfortable in his armchair, enjoying each and every one of your words with a crooked smile on his ugly mouth. His appearance, very typical of the punks of the 80s, seems today almost a caricature, and yet he looks in his, in his elements. Behind him, two other thugs dressed in similar regalia dominate the exit. Old kindred, old bruja. No need to be so ungrateful, you old bitch. It was a gift. Can't you accept it with your characteristic grace and dignity? Tobias, raising a hand, points at Jackson with a threatening gesture. You don't know who you're talking to, rabble. Oh? They answer in her voice as, Tobias, you idiot. You think I haven't done my homework, choir boy? His voice slowly begins to gain volume. I know very well who you are. I know exactly who you are, your sires. Who is your shadow? What you can and cannot do. But it seems to me that you are the ones who do not understand who I am. His eyes wide open, revealing the entirety of his iris. I'm Jackson fucking Cunningham. Oh my god, I love his hair. His voice, slightly higher pitched than one would expect, is still capable of shaking the walls. His anger is genuine. If there was a baron in this rotten shit town, it would be me. And that's why you're here today, fuck dolls. To negotiate, or are you not? I believe that negotiate is not the right word. Throwing his head back, Jackson loads a bloody flag and spits it against the ground. What? Damn you. A piercing cry of panic coming from the next room snatches the attention of your entire coterie. Cunningham! Easy now, the three of you. We're dealing with important things here. Fucking important, I dare say. You know the conditions. I, the princeling sent me a letter. A fucking letter. Princeling? I didn't please. Have you seen the conditions? Hot stuff? I have. 
they seem fair to you, you have no other choice. Punk is not dead, it's undead, exactly. It reminds me of Pink, by the way, great character. Careful now. Jackson turning to his bodyguards lets out a shrill, unpleasant laugh. I guess not, pussycat. And yet I refuse. His words take you completely by surprise, hitting you where it hurts the most, in your lack of preparation. Oh, what? I refuse, simple as that. Neither I nor any kindred related to the Heartless will join the fucking Camarilla. You don't understand anything that's happening. This is going to be a cordial visit. The deal was already closed, and now this? Before you can come out of your reverie, Tobias begins to speak while adjusting his black leather gloves. Are those going to be your last words, Bruja? Ain't you the she cheeky one? Am I going to try and remember the Masquerade? Blood Hunt. Julia, absolutely. Blood Hunt is going to be the game I will be playing on. Let's see if the 9th of July, what day is that? That's a Saturday. Perfect. 9th of July is going to be my anniversary. That is when my channel was created, three years ago almost. And I will be playing and having a charity event, Doctors Without Borders, as usual. And I will be playing Blood Hunt. I will try to maybe see if other uh, people I know will be joining. Definitely going to be playing the Blood Hunt. <laughs> yeah, I got self-important much. Ain't you the cheeky one? No, 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 no. Tobias, stop. Let Diane speak. No, 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 no. That's fucking rich. The Ventra and the Tremere are the service at, at the service of the Delicate Toreador. Speak, child. There is still time to correct us, Cunningham. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Hope you're doing well, by the way. <clears throat> Before anyone can say anything else, a second scream of pain from the next room catches the attention, followed immediately by a resounding thud against the wall. How old are your lambs supposed to be? You are young, very young, and yet look at you, knee-deep in cult shit, wars and whatnot paraphernalia. Wow, he's monologuing. You have no fucking idea what this world is like, and yet you claim it for yourselves. Oh no, not for you, for your sires, for your princes, for those who suck their dicks at the expense of more important title. And for what? So that you can strut around the Elysium? The Heartless will never join your farce. Attack. Sounds like a good idea. There we go. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yes, you're saying you're, I, I, I've heard that the story in the Battle Royale is really good, though. Sorry, I didn't catch the second half of your message. Uh, I will be trying it out because apparently I've heard it's one of the most successful of the games. Uh, I've never played it. I really, really like story, but I'm going to say this. We have gotten three entirely text-based games, two visual novels, um probably quite a lot of these fan games as well text-based uh swan song very dialogue heavy very story heavy earthblood very actiony mm, not not great i want to say the swan song uh wraith really really cool really good uh i've sad i didn't play that more i think i think uh blood hunt is scratching an itch that needs to be scratched as well because i mean if you look back at uh, bloodlines there's a lot of action in that game as well a lot of action Come on, we go, in, we go in, we get this idiot, and we leave. The moment your hand touches the doorknob, a shiver runs through you from the top to bottom, like a terrible electrical shock that engraves in your mind something is wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I think, I think there's room for every kind of game. Bloodlines 2 could be there sometime. I think, um, I think with everything, temper your expectations. It's going to be a good game. It's not going to be Bloodlines. I don't think any game is going to be Bloodlines because Bloodlines was lightning in a bottle and the entire gaming scene has changed since then. So many aspects of Bloodlines, um, the very, very advanced graphics, the uh, narrative storytelling, it's a common thing these days, but it wasn't really at the time. Bloodlines is a good game, but it also really came out at a good time. Also, we're playing close to 20 years after its release with a lot of patches fixes um bloodlines vanilla when it came out is practically unplayable let's say that i played it when it came out johnny 
Turning the knob and pushing hard, the door finally gives away before you, and the sight inside greets you with sullen cruelty. Johnny? No. J John, is that you? No, no, no. Tied to the high ceiling fan, Johnny's lifeless body is hanging upside down. His jugular vein open, his blood dripping into several glasses carefully placed underneath like a shot board. Terror grips your mind. The image of your best friend butchered, treated like a pig, penetrates your mind with the ferocity of a beast. A scream of panic rips his way through your throat. I think um, I think the whole thing, the writers leaving, the game was practically already finished writing. Um, I I I think I haven't played it. I don't know. I think three games, as far as I know, were planned before White Wolf became a thing again. White Wolf, now World of Darkness, was basically in a moth bag for a long time, and development of Swan Song. Bloodlines 2 and Earthbound. Earth Heart. Heart of the Earth. Earth. Oh, we have six. I forgot. Heart of the Forest. Great game as well. Really good game. Uh, Earthblood, Bloodlines 2, and Swan Song were all planned in like 2017, 2018. There's two things that those two games there have something in common, and it's that they're not very good. So, uh, temporary expectations. The studio working on Blood Lines Two was a small studio. I I don't know what I, I'm gonna play it. I'm probably gonna enjoy it, but I, it's it, it never had the chance to be Bloodlines again. That would have never happened. Even if you had the best right, all the original writers, all the best crew, wouldn't have been the same thing. And it's hard to describe that, but it's not about the quality of the game as much as it's about when the game is released and the culture around it and how that has grown. People hated Bloodlines when it came out. People hated Bloodlines. It was it was bashed. It was it was on par with Swan Song, if not worse. Um, so much of the good content just was inaccessible to the, the bugs janky engine everything it's been fixed bursting into tears you approach johnny's body rigor mortis has left his face forever etched with the grimace of absolute dread yeah yeah of course it was released unfinished and people wanted bloodlines 2 to be released now and it was practically unfinished so i'm sensing like a pattern here um it got delayed indefinitely because it was not up to par. It was not of enough quality. I don't think there's any other reason it got delayed. They played it and realized this is not... We can't release this. It's not going to be a good game. And if you think about it, the fact that they released Earthblood and Swan Song tells you a lot about what where it might have been at the time. Oh, the Crusader Kings 3 mod is really good. I played that with Huddy and uh, Josh and Harry a while back. God, it was a long time ago. What I'm saying is, even with the original writings of Bloodlines, they decided to postpone the game for a long time. Not necessarily because they got rid of the original writers. The shot glasses filled to the top with blood spread out before you like a cool feel of red flowers. Yeah, as long as it turns out well and finished, I can wait. I, I, I feel exactly the same way. I don't want to rush it. It'll be out when it's out. I, I, trust, I trust them to, to know. This is this is their flagship. They're they're working on it. To drink. No. Trying not to accept the new dark reality that unfolds before you, you embrace sorrow as a way of escape, and sobbing you push away thoughts of monsters praying in nightclubs to drink your blood. After a few interminable and bitter minutes, your mind comes to articulating the only logical thought. Vampires. Aliens. Alien vampires. I had to get out of here. Get help. As you turn around, two dark figures block your exit. A couple in suits. Hello, little lamb. Going somewhere? A primal fear grips you as you look into the bright eyes. Also, by the way, I have no problems with these models. This is perfectly fine. This is better, even. Story is good. Mood is good. Design is good. This has good mouth feel. Yeah, Bloodlines was brought up to the quality as well through patches because the quality was there originally behind all the ugly. The modern games don't have that, unfortunately. Uh, Xenomorphy, we don't know if Bloodlines 2 has that because we haven't played it. Uh, Swan Song has a lot of good quality to it, but a lot of it is 
really, really poorly, a lot of really poorly, poor design choices. Um, but Bloodlines, it had good writing. It was a good game. But again, like, it's not really all about that. I would, I, I think, the thing is, it flopped. It sold less than 75,000 copies. The studio closed due to it. And it doesn't matter if it's a good game behind all the bugs. It's about money. And it was a flop. It sold incredibly poorly. And it's only due to the love from the fans that it's doing well now. And I don't think Paradox wants to release a flop again. Because <laughs> the later couple of games have been bad. Uh, Galador, Swanson still worth it to check out. Wait a year, get it on sale. Temper your expectations. Uh, I made a review on it. There were parts of Swan Song that I really, really liked. The second Inquisition, aside from being completely one of the most easiest organizations imaginable to infiltrate, really well done. Yeah, we don't need another Cyberpunk 2077. Um, but yeah, even even if it's released as best as good as it can be, I don't think it's ever gonna catch that hype that uh, Bloodlines One caught. You also have to remember how incredibly big Vampire the Masquerade was at the time. It's nowhere near as big. It was competing with Dungeons and Dragons. V -v -v Vampires. Yes, and the wrong kind too. In the blink of an eye, the woman is immediately in front of you, and with impossible speed, grabs you by the collar of your shirt. Lights out. Your whole body shoots out as if you were. A ragdoll thrown violently against the wall. You feel how the blow has shattered all your bones, perforated some organs. And above all, you feel how there is no way out. With your last breath, you let out a cry of pain. You are going to die here, Zack Riley. Before your consciousness finishes fading away in a cloud of pain, you see how the man pulls out a cell phone and holding it up to his face, he says, We are in position. Commands Operation Cathedralis Tenebrae. Which a three quality game, though. I would love to see it. I'd love to see it. Yeah, the industry sucks the life out of everything is always ironic. This is why this is why this is so good. You get passionate fans making games. The community is super strong. The family. I love that word, family. When you come to waves of pain runs through your body, the assailants hit you in the head with something extremely hard. Uh, and you feel the blood flowing down your temples. After a couple of seconds, you realize what's around you. Jackson's office turned into a full-blown battlefield. Turning quickly to where your companions were, the reality shocks you, leaving you completely frozen. <gasps> oh no, they become marionette pieces. I, Tobias? Slowly getting up, the whole world is spinning around you. The pain is indescribable, and you know that if you don't feed, you will die. It's like everyone else around you. Where your coterie was just a few minutes ago, now there are only bones, blood, and ashes remaining. I didn't, Tobias, no. I knew you for a grand total of ten seconds. You would cry if you could, but the little vitae left in your body is the only thing that separates you from your final death. I never, I never told you, but uh, you were so boring. Thank you, thank you for everything. Saying goodbye was never your strong suit, but having to say goodbye to someone immortal is even more complicated. I swear I will avenge you. Sure. On the spot where Jackson's men stood, now only a couple of piles of bones and smoldering ashes remain. You are also their targets, huh? I only see two pirates. Where is Cunningham? Run to your prince. Run, little burr. The shadows are back. Oh, the, the Sabbat. I was going to say the Camarilla, but that's not right. Shadows? A horrible symbol tops out the end of the message, an inverted ankh riddled with spikes. The Sabbat. Oh no! Oh dear! Oh dear, the Sabbat! Whatever shall we do? Completely closed, and in my current state, I cannot open it by force. Hey, Bob! Birkins, first time you lie with me. Nice to have you here. Used to be in Montreal playing live Sabbat games in Montreal. Oh, I'm jealous! I'm so jealous! I'm writing a script about the. Um, the Fallen Angels right now, uh, a patron script, uh, the Coterie Fallen Angels, which has a little bit of history of, of Montreal as well. Man, the book is great. I love it. Montreal is such a cool story. One of the best uh, by night books. 
Paradox usually is being modder friendly, so we can hope for a lot of handmade applications for it. I hope so. Uh, I really hope there will be a lot of modding ability. Kind of been tinkering with the idea of a changeling fighting game where you can also select an art in addition to a character. Non God, that sounds really cool. Changeling fighting game. Yeah, man. Uh, Black Dog made some really interesting books. Not a huge fan of the Fomori book, which is also, by the way, really difficult to find. Collapsed on the ground over a pool of blood lies Zach Riley, fighting against death, facing the odds. Feed. Zach. Feed. I. Feed. I am so sorry. Reaching for the man's neck, you sink your fangs into his jugular and drink with relish. Slowly, the blood sliding down your throat begins to heal you. With each slow sip, you notice one less heartbeat. Go on, go on, go on, go on. He's dead anyway. Oh, how unfortunate. There's a lot of blood here that you could drink, by the way. Just, just saying. But you stop. Your body, your body asks for more. The beast craves more, and yet you stop. Riley. Diane, no, I don't want to die. And you don't want to see him die either. Because he said some nice things to you 15 minutes ago. Something about his weak human has caught your attention all night long. Not his physical beauty, which is lacking. Not his fashion sense, which is mockable. No, but something beyond that. Something you almost thought was lost in our society. A willingness to sacrifice. Okay. Uh, flooded with your regained strength, you bring your wrist to your mouth. And biting down hard, blood immediately gushes out abundantly. Drink quickly. I love the red sofa. I love it too. I love everything about this game. This game is great. Uh, giving mod support is essentially giving your game unlimited life extension. It's almost always worth the effort. I agree. I agree. I really hope they make Bloodlines too moddable. Giving a tug, you say, you know what they should do? You know what they should do? They should release a visual novel engine to work fiddle with. I know there's a lot of them out there, Ren P and Visual Novel Maker. They should release an official World of Darkness visual novel engine with like a bunch of artwork included, music. That would be great. It would really get the community going. Uh, we just slend a wrist over his mouth. Zack slowly drinks a sweet vitae, slowly at first, faster and faster until it's enough. Not really how an embrace works, but uh, giving a tug, you separate your arm from the... Well, I mean, yeah, drinking, but you only need like one drop of vitae. That's enough. Giving a tug, you separate your arm from the man who's still drenched in sweat and blood begins to heal. The effect of the vampiric blood coursing through his veins. Y you too? There is no time for explanations. The answer is yes, yes and no. Come with me, when we get out of here we can talk. Go with you? Yes, and quickly. I felt so bad for you. It was so poorly, you were so bad at flirting. I just need to fix you. Sagnell's standing seems to be assessing the regenerative effort, effects of the blood coursing through his veins as he opens and closes his hands and feels his chest. Have you, have you turned me into? And then he shits his pants because that's what happens when you turn into a vampire. No, I've only healed you, but now we have to leave now. Oh, 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 she turned me into a ghoul. Okay, never mind. I will follow you, Diane. She turned me into a ghoul. Okay, okay, that's good. Let's get out of here. This inner voice thing and the beast being a kind of character inside you became a stronger aspect in B5 contrary to earlier. Uh, I think it became a stronger aspect mainly due to LA by Night, actually. Uh, Jason Carl's way of describing the beast's really uh, colored a lot of the community. Your playthrough is so much more in-depth than mine was. I think I skipped over some plot items, but I can probably say that the bouncer punched me in the face is good. Uh, it good. It truly is imagination based. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, let's leave the body there. Let's get out of here. Am I done with the game? Am I close to the ending? Yeah, let's 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 leave. Oof. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Can we get out of here? Nope. This uh, club has been destroyed. I wonder why she's still alive. Maybe Cunningham spared her. Ooh, I like this. I like this. Yeah, everyone's dead. That's just, ooh, okay. Before you realize the man who guarded the access to the VIP area. Around him, the same footprints that decorated the upper floor. Oh, no, 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 no. They have torn into pieces. This will not go unanswered, no, no. Okay, I'm gonna have to skip some of this stuff. Because we gotta, we gotta finish the game. Okay, so if I click, ooh, pardon me, if I click there, we'll go. Well, Darkness Manga Tokyo by Night Visuals. Ooh, that would be cool. 
Yeah, this is the end. Okay, good. Good. This is a good game. Good playthrough. Cool. Worst face ever. I agree, Bob. I agree with you. Um, let's see here. We can go out here. <laughs> Ghouling without the princess. Okay, call the sheriff. I agree. Okay. Can't get in here. That's uh, that's inconvenient. Oh, I will have to go out through the bar, obviously. <clears throat> this is the first chapter of a long story. <coughs> Pardon me. Looking forward to it. I can absolutely see why this game is the winner. I mean, I haven't played... <coughs> Pardon me, I haven't played the other ones. I heard that uh, Prox, um, Praxis is really replayable, so that's going to be the next one on the stream. When you finally set foot outside the Heartless where the carnage took place, the cold ring greets you mercilessly. Dan, we have we have to get help. Call the police. Don't worry, they'll be around. But they're not going to help us as much as others. Others? I'm so sorry, Zach. I was I almost said I'm so sorry, Zach. I really am. But you're coming with me. Suddenly, Zach, Zach's breathing. I hate the z sound. We don't have that in Swedish. We don't have z. We don't have ch. Um. So when you say check, we say check. When you say z Zach, you say z Zach. And when you say sheep, is it cheap? No, cheap, go sheep. And I always mix up W's and V's. Uh, uh, vampires and werewolves. It's like being becomes even more angry. Why, why are you sorry? Because your life, as you knew it, comes to an end tonight, and it's all my fault. But, but I would have died without your help, and, and now you wouldn't be involved in any of this. There are nights when I really wish I had nothing to do with any of this, but... Wetting your lip, you stifle those useless feelings that you've been clutching in your chest since you were a human. We have to go back to my sire, Gabriel. He will know what to do next. Your sire? Yes, the one who turned me. My father, if you want to hear it in closer terms. But we have to go now. Uh, there is an invite to the VIP room in the trash up front. If you use it, you get punched. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used that one. Was a clan of Sombra who needed invitations to get into a house? I, I I don't think that's any clans. Yeah, you're right. That's not a clan. That's more of a flaw in, in V5. Yeah. Not a clan weakness, no. This, La Sombra were not visible in reflections and recordings. And that has now been upgraded to basically mess with electronics when they're around them. So they can't be recorded, but they also cause like glitching and stuff in, in electronics. Zach, really, this is going to be very hard to hear, but you can't go back to your... You can't go back to your old life. Do you understand me? No, I don't understand you, but I would follow you to death. You know it's not real. You know it's the effect of your Toreador Vitae cursing through his veins. You know that when it wears off, it'll try to abandon you like so many others. And yet, you can't help a painful smile. Cursed be the dreams and the hopes. Cursed be all those who would try to destroy them likewise. Aiden, Tobias... I knew thee well. Well, not really. With one last thought, you approach Zack, and placing a kiss on his lips, you whisper in his ear, Go cash me outside. Let's go, love. And leaning on each other, they made their way towards the end of the night in search of Gabriel, Toradol Primogen, Primogen, sorry, and Diane's sire. Bram Stoker's Dracula would be which clan if we look at his characteristics? I mean, officially in the game, um, and the game very much follows the Dracula of the book. He's a Tsimitsi old clan. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, man, I don't like Tsimitsi, I guess, to be honest. Was that they had to have an invite to enter homes and private buildings? I think that's a really good Tsimitsi attribute it wouldn't work for them as a sabbat of course but uh maybe they had to resist frenzy if they got uninvited if they went in uninvited that would be cool that would be a cool clan flaw and so it begins and thus it ends i think we are talking about very different things think you don't think you know maybe tell me old friend are they really so different Oh, of course, the rook will fall, no doubt. But it is the pawn that will really show the quality of the game. Any chance that the pawn will find its true side? That's something he won't even be able to decide for himself. It's getting late, the sun will be up soon. Good luck, Abyss Walker. I'm sure we'll see you in the future. If not as allies. If not as allies, you won't see us coming, Hatter. Bravo. Bravo. 
It's about repealing your lifestyle. It's so creepy. I agree. Uh, send in revenants to kill the owner first. Uh, of course. Then you can't be invited. Good set of attributions. Can't skip this. But, um... Yeah, he might be a gangrel. He might be a gangrel, absolutely. I don't wouldn't say venture because he... I don't see any feeding restrictions aside from... Well, I mean, he feeds from women, but I think he also feeds some children, doesn't he? Um, splish, splash, blood, smash, flesh, murder, bone, break. <laughs> nice sound effect. Cesaraz, uh, the woman under the sand by the puffballs. John Wick versus Mithras. <laughs> I haven't actually seen a single John Wick movie. Can you believe that? Not a single one. Which is embarrassing, I had to say. Simitsi and V5 have protein. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. So, so it actually brings them even closer to Dracula, I would imagine. Uh, Tremere. I mean, if he's old clan Simitsi, he would have... Uh, uh, what's it called? Oof, oof. That scared me. Uh, what's it? God, I keep forgetting the name of their magic. <sighs> Who got blood magic, obviously. Koldunic sorcery, that's the one. Koldunic. Um, yeah, I guess feeding restriction is innocence. Yeah, Koldun. He would be a Koldunic sorcerer. All right, that's actually all what we have time for today. I've been streaming for almost three hours, which was an hour longer than I intended. Uh, lots of fun having everyone here. If you're watching the VOD, thanks for catching up. I will be trying to play more titles <laughs> uh, in the future. Definitely, at least the top three. I would love to play uh, even more. Let's see if we can get the... Um, let's close the Windows Capture. No, oh, hold on. Let's close the... Bam Jam. Here's, here is the website. I have the link down here as well. Go check it out. Go play some of the games. Outstar hosted this wonderful person. And Heartless Lullaby is the game we played. Second game is Praxis. Third place, Waning Crescent. And then if we go to all 87 entries, ideally, I would love to play all 87 of these. Because, wow. Family, I'm, I'm proud of you. So many cool titles. So cool. Can't wait to check all these out. So, um, thank you everyone for joining me, and um, I will hopefully catch you again soon, probably with a little bit more of a warning. If nothing else, I will be streaming the 9th. I'm kind of thinking I want to play only community games the 9th. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'll play Blood Hunt on another stream. I'm going to, I'm going to, next Vampire the Masquerade Jam... I'll play all three. I'll, I'll, I'll give one stream for each of these three games. Um, and then all the other games will be on my anniversary stream. I will try to play every single one of these if I can. That feels like a really good thing to do. Saturday, 9th July. Um, I'll be streaming then. Glad you enjoyed it, Xenomorphy. Uh, I'll try to attend the future. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much for coming. Um... Thank you for the fun. Was a good way to spend time before my game starts. Voivod, good luck with your game. Voivod. Julia, thank you for coming by. Bob, happy to have you here. Peace out. Uh, Silver Trim Hill, very happy to have you here. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't either. Uh, Lysandra could work. Lysandra could work for Dracula. I think most clans would work for him. Maybe not. Ew. I mean, if you if you look at the Nosferatu film, it would be Nosferatu. Anyway. Super thanks to everyone for showing up. Um, this was my first foray into YouTube streaming in close to a year. Last time was when I was streaming. I think last time was when I was streaming uh, Night Road on my anniversary. So, feels good to be back. Uh, I think I'll keep streaming on YouTube. Uh, Twitch, Twitch is scary. I don't want to do Twitch. Take care, everyone. Be careful out there and... Uh, I screwed it up. Now be careful out there for Gehenna.